This broadcast from IOF TV is brought to you by Tikator and Lumonite. Hello and welcome back to the World Orienteering Championships 2023 here in Flims and Larks in Switzerland. And we've got two absolutely fantastic middle distance races to bring to you live, starting, of course, with the women's and we'll move on to the men's in a couple of hours. The qualification for this, that took place on Wednesday with the top 15 uh, from each heat, making it through to the final, plus some of the minor nations as well to make it up to 60 runners here this is uh, this is where they started the long distance they're not going to be quite this high up uh, today in the race instead we're in a really kind of uh, technical area very very specific to this part of Switzerland and over the last few hours the athletes have been getting ready they've all been in quarantine so that nobody knows uh, what the challenge is uh, out there now that the maps have been released to the public and to the media a lot of these athletes like natalia gempler who you see there are still in quarantine no uh books no no um mobile phones no computers no t uh, contact with the outside world is allowed so there's a lot of nerves that kind of build up with the teams here and they're each going to be doing their own thing to try and relax and get prepared uh, a lot of small naps uh, playing games things like that as they prepare for the uh, tough challenge is ahead of them and a lot of the, the the Swedish team in particular have not run the long distance uh, like Hannah Lundberg there, who you can see. So maybe um, we can count them amongst uh, the favorites. It's 4.8 kilometers today, lots and lots of up and down, and we expect the winning time to be around 34 minutes, as is typical for this kind of middle distance terrain. I think we're getting our first uh, finishers in towards the arena uh, at the moment, so some of those early starters, but it's really going to be the ones at the end who we're looking out for. Well, we uh, ran these courses uh, yesterday, and so, Jonas, let's chat through the challenge that they've got. Yeah, and as you can see, it's very, very technical today you see this the start here actually this section visibility is rather low so in my opinion this is the most difficult part of the course uh, first second and third control in the women's class then we have the a bit of a longer route uh, to the fourth control I expect them to go south and uh, take this street on the way to the fourth uh, control then from there there are different options. We will see that for sure later on uh, five six uh, TV control as you can see it here visibility better you can see the features They are very high. They're very obvious in the terrain uh, So it's no smaller details uh, On this map everything you see map is very very clear out in the terrain uh, another few shorter controls here uh, visibility about the same i expect it to be when we're pre-running also what uh, simon and nickley told us control 10 can be mm -hmm. quite difficult we also know that control 6 caused a few problems for the runner so far uh, you have to be very focused all the way 12 13 mostly for the cameras yeah, let's yeah, be yeah. honest uh, very beautiful lake here um and we will get of course pictures from that part and then from this control from the lake, there's some kind of transportation uh, leg, 13, 14, the first time you can, or maybe the second time you really can speed up and use your running skills. 14, 15, looks, all the controls, 16, look rather easy, but it's mm. a lot of climbing, it's quite steep there, it's physically still very, very tough. Uh, 16, 17, maybe not the most difficult control. You can go around uh, this path and the open area there is quite clear. 17, 18, you can go different 
uh, ways you can take this small path uh, but then you have to climb a lot or you can to try try to stay on height and get control 18 from the slope from there back up very very tough climb to the last control up to the arena it's a physically demanding course and it's also a very technically demanding course i expect it to be a very very interesting race to follow yeah, let's have a look then at this leg in a bit more detail because this is by far the longest uh, leg of the course and there's a few different options you can take. Yeah, you can see here, that's the one I was talking about. You can go out on the street, then you can go down there. Um, it's rather good runnability from the street down to this path. Uh, then in this middle section, you can, there are different options. You can also go for this small track in between, doesn't really matter. I think it will track up in this part quite a bit because it's quite grassy um, and bushy. So for the first run, not an advantage. You can also go around there, then you get a good entrance. Um, the control itself, it doesn't really matter from which direction the, you come. You can see this uh, kind of stony feature just before control 4, you get the hill leading you towards the control. It's not the most difficult control point of the course. Or you go the blue option, but you have a quite a lot of uh, terrain running in the beginning. So I don't, actually I don't think that anyone will go uh, there and stay in the terrain for such a long time because it's really rough, it's really bushy, it's slowing you down a lot there in the beginning. Yeah, it's a bit too green there really um, for, for me for that to be kind of any sort of an option. Um, but we have had the first runners in to the finish then for uh, this middle distance final and the crowd's gonna build. Uh, this is this, this view over the lake, uh, very famous lake in these parts and the color has informed all of the branding um, here for this World Championships. The start list, uh, we're looking towards the end of the start list now um, in terms of, and the, the positions are in terms of how the qualification went. So the winners of the qualifiers are all going to be starting last. Uh, and now's the chance so we can pick out the favorites. Who do you want to name? Yeah, I mean, we have one early starter, uh, Andrine Benjaminsen. We, I mean, the, the bronze medalist from the long distance race uh, started very early, already out in the forest, actually. Uh, definitely a, a name we have to have our list. But then, of course, towards the end, uh, many names, as you mentioned. Also, a few names we haven't seen in the long distance. Uh, but if we go for the big favorites, then, of course, Sarah Hagström chasing her first individual medal at the World Championships. Uh, Hanna Lundberg, I haven't seen her yet, these championships. Natalia Kempele, Tuve Alexanderson, Simona Abersold, and uh, Evely Kasiku also very strong in the qualification and at the European Champs uh, last year. Yes, this is Andrina Benny-Minson. She started about 15 minutes ago. Um, she didn't have a good qualifier. She made a mistake on one of the last controls as she was descending down the hill. Um, so really, she'd be looking to, to do a lot better than her starting position this time. And already here, you can see it's very characteristic characteristically for the first bit of the course it's bushy there are many fallen trees it's a lot of uh, going to the left or to the right if there's something in your way we have to be very careful with direction uh, and maybe use the path you get here you can see uh, a good start for Hanna Müller from Germany but maybe not the best route out there that was what I was talking about try to use the roads and the tracks when you get the chance to yeah, I think that ultimately leads uh, Benny Minson into the lead then at control five, where she took just under 12 minutes. And then seems to be pretty good through this point as well. And I mean, all these features here, all these contours, it, it, it doesn't look like it, but it's a lot of climbing when you're out in the forest and you have to lift your feet all the time. It's very tough physically. Yeah, in other parts of the world, you might have a map like that and it'll be mapped with two and a half meter contours. No, these are all five meter contours. They and are big shapes. When I was out there, it reminded me of the time when I was playing Catching Features, <laughs> this orienteering game, and you have this automatic, automatically generated maps. It's like you give the computer this data from the contour and it's just overdoing it. Mm. Everything is so clear. Every little hill on the map is very, very high in the terrain. Uh, it's kind of strange to run there because usually it's a bit more smooth the terrain mm. uh, but it's interesting and it's a lot of fun but it's easy you know easy to pick out all of those shapes if you're going slowly through the terrain when these athletes the speed these athletes are going through it you know some of them will be going too fast for the terrain and the problem is that once you're off direction 
it's so easy to just get it right in your head. You can always think, yeah, but this de depression, it suits to what I'm expecting. And then you kind of can convince yourself to be right, even if you're quite wrong. So th I think that's the big challenge today, once you're off. Uh, or when you you have to really notice when you're on the way to make a mistake because I think everyone will have small smaller troubles here today but you have to be uh, aware of that and maybe take this first signs you get uh, carefully and really listen to them and put in an extra second for just safety reasons. So this is Theresa Smilikova from Slovakia probably a surprise uh, top 20 for her in the long distance race uh, and she was sat on the leader's chair for quite a long time. But yeah, this, this first section really gives you that indication of how, how green it is. That, that is quite typical for the, the first loop up into, until control three, and then it gets um, quite a lot clearer when you get to from Yeah, exactly. It changes onwards. at the point where Benjamin is here on the map. And this side of the road, it's much more open. It's good. It's better visibility. But the thing with the visibility is, of course, the visibility is good, but there are so many hills and small features that make you don't see further than 20, 30 meters mm -hmm. anyway, not due to green like vegetation. It's more due to the contours. Yeah, exactly. You can't see. There's just a, <laughs> a massive hill in the way, so you really have to use your compass quite a lot. So that's our first look. Then this is control four on the women's course. Um, and then you uh, drop uh, down the hill into kind of a, a de larger depression where it gets quite dark in the bottom there and then in towards uh, the fifth control. But, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned it before. You, it's good to use the compass, but it's, it's not too easy because you... It's hard to run a straight line yeah. when you want to be fast. You have to kind of round the depressions and the hills all the time. So you have to kind of always go to the left or to the right. So just going for on compass direction is quite difficult in that terrain. And this really is the difficulty today. Yeah, you can see um, Yasmina gas, gas Nerd like just going around there, um, not quite taking a straight line because that's often not the, the quickest way. It's often not the most efficient way at all. Um, but she will go into sixth place then. And the Austrians had good qualification results. I think, did they all get through? Yeah, they all went through. I don't know how many times that happened before, but they have uh, six runners in the finals, three in the women's class and three in the men's class. And uh, in my opinion, they even have very strong runners to the final, especially maybe in the in the men's class with Bonek and uh, Imsin. Yeah, really, really good kind of uh, team performance from them. All the teams have been able to enter uh, three runners for each course, plus any runners who've got an automatic spot if they're world champion or a defending world champion or uh, European champion. And here we see this 10th control. And it's difficulty with the features you get before because you can misinterpret like a null as a hill. And when you do that, it's hard to get right there because you will end up a bit far to the north. So it, there's, I mean, you don't expect them to do big mistakes, but it's very easy to end up at these three knolls there in a row instead of the, the one that where the control is. But if you look around and are looking for the green bit, then it should be possible to get to the control quite quickly anyway. Yeah, this is where everything looks the same. And then once you're off that, if you stop uh, kind of ticking off all those small features, then it's really, really hard to relocate again as well. Although the rocks, the crags and the rocks, I think are quite obvious in the terrain. So maybe that's something good to, to relocate on. But then you could see just from uh, Annika Gassner there trying to drop down that little green slope between controls 10 and 11. Uh, that was pretty slow and pretty tricky to get down into there, where it's a little bit flatter around control 11. Yeah, but I tricky. mean... Uh, if we get further into the start list, I think it will track up quite a bit, all these greener bits. It's part of the game in the middle list, and that's why I think it's good to have a qualification, because you have to deserve your spot in the end of the start field. If you have an advantage in the end, then you have deserved it, at least, so it's... Ah, I think it's okay, it's, it's tracking up for sure, but it won't decide the race. So, this is... Annika Gassner, who we saw just on the tracking there, have a few problems to control number 10. But that's the, the, the second TV control, the one to the lake. And uh, we'll get at her time at the next control. It's a very uh, popular swimming spot. 
and really these controls not going to test the navigation um, it should be fairly simple and a little bit of track running there for these athletes too it's like one of the few parts of this course where you can kind of relax a bit more or, or kind of have a look at what's coming ahead um, and you've got to drop down then this is the 13th controls this is where we'll get our time check at that um, at this spot and obviously compa compared to uh, Anna I think then uh, Gasner was 1 minute 34 ahead so now down to 319 so that's a five minute mistake then I think with uh, controls uh, 10 and, and a bit of time lost at 11 as well. Here you have it, uh, you were mentioning before the kind of the color, the lake was uh, defining the, the brand like that uh, you see it here, the color from all the branding of this World Championships. So go back to the start then. Here's you know me from Finland taking her map and gets her first view of, of what exactly this terrain is going to be like and what the course is going to be like. Let's uh, quickly jump then towards the finish. So Ali Crocker is current leader and it looks like uh, Ruba Duric has lost some time on the final stages because she was ahead uh, earlier on in the course, but only a few seconds in it. There's quite a brutal climb up from uh, the second to last control up the hill and then they've got to go up and around in the arena yeah, as well, I think, it's really tough. I think that's fair to say, it's quite a brutal one. Here mm. we have Benjaminsen on the way to the second TV control. Uh, no problems at control 10, no problems at 11 either. No. So uh, she will be here with the new best time as I expect. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to pick her up on uh, the cameras, here she is. and. Oh, it's going to be a it's going to be a, a big, big, uh, fast new time, but she's starting so early on compared to um, compared to the other top names because I mean, of her poor qualifier. I, it's it's going to be so hard for us to say whether it's going to feature at all. I think I expect her to be on the leader's chair for quite a while, but I mean she, she has to be on the leader's say. chair if she wants to end up in ah, in a medal position. Um, course but it's good for us now we will get the time uh, where we can compare the others to uh, she will be here at around with a running time of around 26 minutes it's a bit to go from here I, I'm not sure if she is gonna make it within this uh, 35 minutes no I, I would guess not but that's kind of my expectation I'm not sure if uh, they will make the 35 minutes and we'll you can either cut see. up there right? Right. so it's slower to go through the, through the uh, cut diagonally up this hill Sanna Müller for Germany in front there as you could see she punched in second position and very unusually for a forest World Championships for a forest race. There's quite a lot of members of the public out in this. It's a very like touristy area, lots of kind of tracks uh, throughout the terrain. But let's head back to the start. This is Sana Fast. She's only running this middle distance and uh, could be a, a promising runner to get some good Definitely. results. Definitely. She ended up uh, in 10th position at the European Championships. Uh, had, I mean, she was able to. She got the chance to just focus on this middle distance, so uh, I think she spent a lot of time here training and the maps around. Um, makes a, for sure the preparation different compared to when you have the long distance as well, because the two kind of terrains were very different. Mm. And when, if you can focus just in one bit, um, well, it's of course you have more spent more time in this kind of terrain then. Yeah, and, and the whole preparation in the last few months as well, the different types of training you're going to do for the for the length of time you expect to be out uh, on your race, then 
yeah, it's very different. But I'm very impressed with Hannah Muller as well. I think yeah, it, was she only, does a great it race. was only this leg here that's really let her down because she was, I think, ahead of Benny Minson at control number three. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's still only two minutes. She was running in front of Benny Minson, you could see that, and she's still only two minutes behind her. So definitely a good performance here. But Sandra Grosberger there, the Latvian, is in the green dot and looks like she's going to go quicker uh, than Benny Minson. In fact, she did by. Less than 10 seconds, Yeah, I think. six seconds. That's the gap, so at control number five. And I mean, we didn't, ha we didn't see any big mistakes from Benjaminsen. And we can't even say that it's no, just to the fact that she was running the long distance. No, I think maybe the cutting off the big main track into control number four maybe was a bit slow. Uh, and this is the brutal climb up, uh, as we were talking about it, up towards the finish. Because um, you've got to gain quite a few contours to get out onto this road. And then you have and to continue here. And then you've here. got to go up to this hill. This is really horrible as well. Um, the competitors do know the layout of this. Um, arena uh, and where the last control is going to be, so they know that they're gonna, they've got to go up this hill again. But that is so not even a fun thing even Ralph Street will hit the right Capricorn this time. Well, we, we we hope so. We hope so. But Florence Anaya from France has um, had a fantastic run. And she's going to take a new leading time then here ahead of uh, Alison Crocker from the United States. Uh, and you can see she's just been so the comparison the green split times on the right are compared to Alison Crocker so she's just been slightly quicker than uh, the American on every single part of the course so 49 30 uh, early days so far for this um, middle distance competition but Florence and I from France is going to take uh, her position in the leaders chair This is uh, Vandula Horchitschkova, she's just come through uh, TV control number one. Uh, she's down into fourth place, so just about a minute and a half down. And some news from one of the, the top Swiss at this point as well. Yeah, we had to punch from Sabine Hauswirt at the first TV control, and she's five minutes and 19 seconds behind. That means a big mistake somewhere. Yeah, for sure. So we're live now with uh, Karina Polzer, and this just shows as if they all had started at the same time. So the synchronization, and yet, so this is the third Austrian I think we'll have seen, with uh, all of the Austrian team making it through into this final. But you can see, as from the GPS tracking, that uh, she's already behind, and this is what it's. You know, the runnability is quite good, but there's all these kind of smaller trees in places as well. And we'll very shortly see her, though, at this uh, control right on the lake's edge. But the athletes have been able to go down to the lake, haven't they? Um, I think so. I'm not 100% sure if it was this lake or if it was another one. Mm. But of course, as you mentioned before, there are many tourists out here in this area. So. Uh, many of the visitors and spectators here had the chance to go down to the lake, so you had to be careful um, when, you, when they put out the controls and everything in mm. order to not, not give away too much information. But I'm not 100% sure how like, many of the streets here that were open or, or if there was kind of a restrictions for the spectators as well. So Karina Pulse is just being uh, careful here just to uh, get the orienteering right, of course, when on camera. She's being followed by the uh, the running camera operators. And it just, <laughs> it's like one of those parts of World Championships, or even though obviously it, it happens in the World Cup circuit as well now, you know, just, just adds a little bit of extra pressure. Um, the whole kind of circus that is um, the World Champs and the extra pressure that it brings, you've just got to know how to deal with those kind of distractions and, and run your own race. But here, Bolsa goes into fourth place. About four minutes behind Andrea van Minson.
So uh, Yasmina Gasner will be the next through to this um, to the lake, to the TV control number two. And uh, we're keeping half an eye on the GPS tracking as well. Um, I hope if you're watching at home, you've got that up as well. Uh, but we'll try to bring you some of the, the mistakes, many mistakes that I think we'll see on this middle distance course as well, because it's not going well for every single runner. But pretty good start for Yasmina Gasner, and uh, she's gonna have the time stop at the next control. She's caught up the Hungarian there, Dominika Miro, by quite a lot, a long time. Started a good like five or six runners for Gassner here. And you can just see how to just take those small glimpses at the map, looking around towards the right, seeing if you can spot the control. Of course, there's always a little track into to these ones already. And for a lot of these, <laughs> a lot of these kind of controls, you, you almost you spot the branding first uh, before the control itself. Okay, let's go back towards the finish then. And Ilieva is on her way in towards the finish. It's probably going to be in the top three at the moment. We miss, I think, uh, Elza Kuza from Latvia into the second place. So it will be the third best time in the hot sun here in Flims and Larks in this fantastic arena that we have, the grandstand, all the Swiss fans here. The atmosphere, I'm sure, is going to build up uh, throughout the course of these races. Yeah, and here we have another few runners now in this GPS relay. Take a look at Mire Trane Ödom. And uh, uh, from earlier, we had Benjamin Sen. Nurmi and Hanna Müller, and you can see that uh, Miri Traniotum actually had a quite a good start, uh, running similar to Benjaminsen and Grossberga. You can see that uh, Kirsi Nurmi missed a little bit at the fourth control. Here she is in the picture, attending it, and you can see that Miri Traniotum was 35 seconds behind Grossberga at this first TV control. And uh, Nurmi is somewhere around the fourth position here just in front of Hanna Müller and I think we'll see a lot of uh, well certainly these athletes with very kind of stop start um, kind of technique uh, because what you've got to do from this one is maybe spot some of the some of the rocks in the distance um, and exactly check uh, you know, match all the features to the ground and try and anticipate what you're going to see next. Here we have it. Uh, I think that Grosberga did the thing I was talking about before, ended up at these three nulls. Very easy that it happens. And seems as if, as if she is a bit on the wrong way there to control 11 as well. It's hard to say. Maybe she, she's just avoiding uh, 
some fallen trees. But of, it's fair to say that Benjamin's in the hit a better track there. Yeah, there were a few fallen trees if you go down on that particular point, but you should be able to go to the left of them, no problem, the way that Benjaminson has done. I think she has spotted the feature now, at least. Heading towards the right direction, here she is. Yeah, there we go. And she's still... Ah, uh, the split will be at control 13. Yeah. So I think she dropped a bit behind. Yeah, I think she's going to go... She should be quite safe for that second place uh, ahead of Hannah Muller. Maybe half a minute behind Benny means at the moment. So still quite an okay race for Sandra Grosberga. Sandra Grosberger making it look very easy through here. Strong runner. And um, yeah, she was really close that time from Benjaminson. And with Benjaminson being the bronze medalist from the long distance, you can say she's really had a good start. And looks very speedy through these controls. You see, she's just trying to drop those other runners there. Here we have her, the leader, Andrine Benjaminsen from Norway, climbing up to the towards the last control and the arena. And uh, still, it looks like quite a good race. But if you look at the time, mm. it's far off those uh, 35 minutes. Yeah. So maybe it's it's the long distance anyway. Yeah, that, that's in her leg. That's not. Yeah, we haven't seen her make any mistakes. Really, I think maybe not the best route on the long leg, but. I mean, this is a really quite a horrible climb up here, and she is going to be uh, longer than 40 minutes. Um, you've got to factor in this climb here, and then you hit the road. You've got to climb even further to kind of round this arena. But I think she's pretty close. Uh, Ifan Dongen, uh, the knockout sprint medalist from the Netherlands, is quite close to her too. And there we go. Now she hits hits the road and has to do a bit of a climb on here. Lots of fans cheering the support as she pushes all the way up this hill after over 40 minutes of running on this 4.8 k's course, 180 meters of climb, a few more meters to climb here. Then it's quite a tricky descent into this arena, but uh, Andrina Benjaminson is gonna set the new fastest time. The question is, how long will it stand? who will be the first person to overtake her. She started way earlier than we'd expect somebody from, from her class to start. Uh, and she's fighting hard now towards the line. But it will be over 40 minutes with an expected winning time of 34. And what we can say is that she's still uh, in second position, only six seconds off at the first TV control. And we had quite a few bigger names that did big mistakes in the beginning, mm -hmm. as, uh, for example, Sanna Fast. Uh, or uh, Cecile Galondry. Yeah, and Hauswitz and Isia Basse as well. I think we've seen all yeah. of them making mistakes. Ingrid Lundanes did a mistake as well. I mean, and that is that is really the key to, to doing well in this race, is trying to have as few mistakes as possible. But for me, she just hasn't I mean, quite been fast enough. Almost everyone we were mentioning now did a mistake on these first three controls. Mm. It's so crucial to get a good start into a middle distance like this. 
he had quite a solid race, you said that. But we, we have to see if it was good enough, enough both uh, physically and technically. So Vandula Hochichkova, I think, is the next one. Did she go up and out of the... Uh, she might have gone up yeah. there. It's hard to say with the GPS. No, she didn't no, okay. go. <laughs> and this is Sabina Hauswirt behind there, I guess. Yeah, yeah And she is. lost a lot of time, as we said before. I was already five minutes behind at the first TV control. So Hochichkova is... Uh, has caught up four minutes on Sabina Hauswirt and of course that's going to be a huge motivation uh, for the Czech runner who's part of the European Relay medalist team. Quite a historic moment for that Czech team and the two of them now together. I think maybe we'll see a bit more pack running com when we have already seen quite a bit of pack running. I think it's because people are going to be making mistakes, like bigger mistakes than they will have done uh, previous times. This is Ingrid Lundinez. She it's started a, a while ago. Yep. yep. Um, and I think it's because we should see uh, what has what basically what has happened to her. Still not as experienced as some on the Norwegian team. Getting it was used actually to not things. a very big miss, not the biggest one we've seen, but twice with a bit bad direction in the beginning, towards the first control out from from the start point, and then just before control one. But let's say in her case, it was just about ha between half a minute and a minute. We have seen worse. Yeah, can we, tell you. we have seen worse. Okay, let's have a little look again at uh, 16 to 17 then in a bit more detail because you've got this massive hill and the lake in the way. For me, it's quite obvious yeah, which way to go. For me, it's no... I'm, especially when you're coming out of yeah. the street there, there's no way you climb over this no. hill. And there's no way you go left of the line either. No, it's such a good entrance there. You have the path and you can see that it kind of continues in this... Uh, yellow bit there almost leading you to the control uh, there's no way that you go straight here no or uh, yeah I'm possibly being proven <laughs> wrong very well. soon but I, I there's no way I can imagine that that's faster no it's super um, it's also not you know when it's so steep on the downhill it's not yeah. very quick um, They've always ha already had a lot of climb in their legs, and they will have seen the end of the course. Yeah, and then and the you don't get the, the entrance as, well. as good to the control yeah. as on the other one, so it's it's really a dream to go the other way around. Like it's quite, it makes the control quite easy. But uh, Hannah Muller in towards the finish here. She, I was about to say she's had a really good run, but she's dropped a lot of time uh, in the last part of the course because, as you can see, she was only a couple of minutes behind Benny Minson. But really, still, she's going to come into that second place and a really good result for the German there. I mean, a good race, especially in the first part that we've seen. Uh, yeah, it was the route choice to the fourth control, but otherwise, technically, it looked very solid. What we have seen, of course, maybe she did a mistake here in the end or she was just physically not able to follow Benjaminsen. But the, the, the very first part in the green, those first three controls, I think she was ahead of Benjaminson at control number three, which is, uh, you know, incredibly impressive. Um, so technical orienteering skills really on point. You can see just how quick uh, Goldberger was through that control through 13. This is Malikova. So Milikova, the Slovakian, just dropping down towards the lake. And for me, she was a quite a surprise. A very, very good result in the long distance with a 17th. But I'm not sure it will be quite as good today. Still, with lots and lots of great runners to come. She's number 37, and we've got 60 uh, athletes. So, just after halfway through the pack.
it's almost like a bit of an arena passage um, control this one where you've got some spectators and all the cameras and everything it's quite unusual I think So we'll just be inside the top 10 for the Slovakian with most of the really difficult controls um, done. But no, I think people could still be caught out around controls 14, 15, 16. There's quite a bit of felling that's gone on in the area or thinning of the forest. Right. So here we have now Teresa Janosikova. In the comparison as well, you see the different options there. Grossberga and Janosikova going a bit more through the terrain. Yeah, Janosikova tend, tends to be the best of the Czechs, of the Czech women anyway. She was 14th in the long distance. And here she is. Just see how she's keeping her head high, trying to check, see what she can see. She descends down into this little, this little bowl here where we have the control. <coughs> you can just see how much up and down there is. There's lots of kind of small hollows that aren't marked on the map because they're just not big enough. It looks to be pretty smooth through that control. And heading into another climb again as well. Now we got the uh, Durkorn in the comparison as well. And you can see she was as fast as Benjamins and Grossberg in the beginning, taking a third option. Yeah, uh, she's found a little good cut through through there, I think. Mm, but it seemed that uh, the options Grossberg had was quite good anyway. Maybe about the same there. Doesn't really matter where you go. soon to get to this first TV control. Yeah, we she sneak in ahead of Grossberger. Mm -hmm. And just the maybe the, the amount of map contact that she's got, you know, compared to another area, you really have to, to kind of yeah, keep I mean, it map uh, contact. In here, I think it's it's worth it to slow down a little bit in order to read the features so that you can move kind of smoothly uh, through the terrain. Uh, I wouldn't do too much of the stop and go in this kind of terrain. I think it's it's better to always have kind of contact and never leave it. Otherwise, the risk for parallel mistakes is just too big. This is Megan Carter Davis from Great Britain, seventh in the long distance. And we'll cut straight back <laughs> to the finish because uh, Yelvamina Gassner trying to control uh, the speed dropping down that slope. Uh, but she is going to go into second place here. Strong results so far from the Austrian. As you can see, though, I think Benny Minson must have been pretty 
quick compared to these other women towards the end of the course, which is probably where we'd expect to kind of see that difference between the, in, between, uh, the kind of top and middle ice athletes. Especially when it comes to the physical skills, of mm. course, they pay off more in the end of the course when uh, the energy level is going down for the maybe a bit less experienced runners. I mean, we have been talking before about Ingrid Lundanes, and of course it was Lizzie Ingham and not Ingrid mm -hmm. Lundanes. But what we said actually uh, is true for Ingrid Lundanes as well, because she did a, quite a big mistake about one and a half minutes at the third control. So, yeah, it was not a replay, but what we said <laughs> was kind of right anyway. <laughs> I hope it's not a commentator's curse uh, anyway. Right, let's head back towards uh, the start now because we're really getting now into the very, very last few uh, results. And here's an athlete who I think was a bit disappointed with her fifth place um, at the long distance. Um, she had very high expectations for this World Championships, and deservedly so, and, and I think, now it goes to the middle. Uh, she was more than just a bit disappointed. I think the fact that she lost it in the very end, again, she's, she's done that before, uh, this individual medal is, was very tough for her, but I definitely see her as one of the candidates for a medal uh, again today because she's so strong technically. Uh, we know about her shape. She really made one more step toward towards these very best runners. And uh, yeah, she's been running the long distance, but still I think her technical skills are so good that she kind of can compensate for that. Yeah. But we'll see. We have seen many, many, many runners struggling here, especially at the first three controls. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's great for the core setters to kind of plunge or you into the hardest bit right at the start when you're not really into the map. I think that's quite... Well, or let's say we haven't seen them struggling, but we see them on the GPS yeah, struggling yeah. because here they, they fo they're focusing on the top runners in the broadcast, obviously. Oh. That's too high for me. It's a bit Way too high. Yeah. Too high I mean, for it's me. okay you, to, to go with like Benny Aminsen. You can avoid that you run down. It's very good. It's very quick to run down on the small track, but then you get an even tougher uphill to 18 and 19. But uh, you can contour around the hill. You're only gaining like one or two contours at that point. So that's this is the the 18th control that she's just punched there, and uh, you need, really need to head up quite sharply from this point. But uh, we've got Andrew and Benny Minton uh, on the picture, who is of course uh, the new leader at the finish. Uh, congratulations, Andrina. How uh, how was the course for you? Thank you. Yeah, um, it was very tough physically uh, and difficult technically as well. So I pushed uh, all that I could physically and uh, I think I navigated quite well. Uh, don't have many mistakes, so I'm quite happy. If we look at the, if we look at the GPS and we see the runners there, uh, it's very obvious that the first three controls seem to be much trickier. I've been out there, but I would like to hear you say and explain to the viewers why it's so much more difficult in the beginning than later on. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, experienced it quite difficult in the beginning. It was difficult to get uh, get that smooth flow feeling in your interior. You really had to push through and uh, get around all the details so yeah it was difficult and then i think the forest opened up a little bit more uh, towards the end do you expect it to to kind of track up and for those later runners to have a bit more of an advantage probably a little bit it usually does but there was there were already some tracks when i ran so yeah i'm not sure probably a little bit advantage but not too much well, congratulations um, on the lead so far. We're going to get back to the race because uh, Sandra Gorsberger is here. She's not going to take over the lead, though. Uh, that is safe with Andrina Benny Minson, but she will be coming into uh, second place here and dives across the line. So the Latvian, who was, in fact, is still in the lead at the first TV point, uh, not going to be the leader here at the finish. I think Andrea Benny Minson was really strong uh, at the end, and you could just see her physicality like proving um, itself uh, towards the end there.
Okay, back towards the start then. Here is a runner who has not done um, this uh, long distance. The strength and the depth of the Swedish team means they've t selected quite a few athletes for this and she could be one to watch and here. It's a very rare picture, we see, because she's not smiling on this one. Usually you see her quite happy. She seems to be very, very focused. And, um, I mean, I don't think anybody is going to forget that she uh, she has a World Cup win in the middle distance when she started first. Um, that picture of when she, she knew that she'd won that, I think nobody will ever forget that. And, you know, she's she's a, a still so young, but a good name for this one as well. And here we see there's another name in this group of the fastest runner and it's uh, Cecilia friberg Klusner. had a good qualification yeah had a really good qualification uh maybe didn't perform quite as well in the long distance she was 28th but um had a fantastic qualification so i think you can expect maybe more things from her from this my one my opinion though she's going too high up on this um spur there could follow the hill you could would get these big features the big rock feature to the that leads leads you to the control would be much easier to get it yeah you really want to be kind of on the right hand side of the hill to be able to see all those features see the slopes there but that's depression i think the is is quite yeah, obvious i think she's, she's doing a small mistake here mm. so we have a time ticking by then to see if we can see her first of all into the fourth control we get the split time at the fifth control more mistakes uh, from the GPS tracking. I'd really recommend having the tracking up alongside the broadcast, to be honest, here today, because you can see that there have been uh, uh, some more mistakes uh, out in the field, and there's, uh, the runners are coming through so thick and fast, I'm not sure we're going to be able to, to tell you them all. But here's Cecilia freeberg Klusman. You can see she maybe looks a little bit agitated with that one, maybe a small mistake uh, on the way in to the fourth control, and now she's kind of dropping uh, down. Uh, the standing's not going to be as quick as her teammate, Mary trying to earn him. Mm, and I think, I mean, the, the runner you've been talking about before having big, big problems in the beginning, it's Sarah Hockstrom still not having found the first control. Yeah, she's been caught now by she has been, she's been Hannah passed, Lundberg. And yeah. she has been passed by Evely Karsiko already. But let's get back to Cecilia Friberg Lisner. It wasn't a big mistake up there, a small, let's say about 30 seconds. But uh, of course, that's. We've it's already seen a much bigger mistakes. Yeah, but I mean, it's still 30 seconds. If you look uh, at the position now, she would be in about second or third position. Now she's in seventh. Quick through here, though, and back up out of this depression. Back towards the start then, and we're into the last three runners. This is Natalia Gempeler running now for Switzerland. She does have a middle distance title to her name. That was back in 2018. That one in uh, Latvia. We saw quite a few people making mistakes there. Vendula Hochechkova, the Czech athlete, into the top three. A good run by her. We saw her catch Sabina Halter after the mistake, so she should be really pleased with her result there. This is uh, Tuve Alexanderson at the start. For me, clearly the biggest favorite for today. Usually, if we look back, Historically, always after a bad race, she's coming back with a, yeah, with a with a big entrance again <laughs> to the to the scene and uh, often winning races just after some disappointments. Yeah, it's it's really tough to be able to do that because so many people will, will try and fight too hard after having a disappointing performance. Uh, maybe like Sarah Hogstrom, not sure. And, um, you know, it can all fall to pieces again. Uh, so she is the defending champion again. Um, she's going to try and add another title and another medal. I think she was asked about uh, how many 
medal she's got compared to Simona Nigley, and it was nearly the same. This should make you happy, Catherine. Megan Carter Davis in on the GPS screen, and she is going well here in the beginning. The good start at the first three controls, and uh, it was okay executed here on the long leg as well. Maybe not the fastest time between three and four, but I mean, you don't lose more than 15, 20, sec 20 seconds on that. It's really about not yeah not taking yourself out of the competition by missing four or five minutes today yeah well we'll catch up with her here and it looks like she's going to set the new fastest time at this point uh, in the course uh, i know she kind of had i think mixed feelings about her run at the long distance she was happy with the seventh place um, but she does go into the lead 23 seconds ahead of sandra grosberger but I, I think she, she knew that she maybe had more potential in that race with a few mistakes uh, in the long distance uh, route choices and uh, the short controls at the top. But I am rushing talking to... Talking about the top. Yeah, talking about the top. Simone Abersol taking her first ever world title in that long distance race. Uh, she is also the European champion in the middle distance back um, in Estonia last summer. She took a bronze medal in this discipline uh, two years ago at the last Forest World Championships. She is the last starter today and, and maybe I think you know she's got some pressure off her shoulders now now that she has finally taken a world title she's been hot on the heels of the likes of Tova Alexanderson for a good few years now and I'm hoping she can just go and enjoy this one she's had good results um, in some of the test races as well so you know she uh, I hope she can enjoy this one and enjoy this terrain competing on the home soil how much you know this, this terrain is very very special it's very distinct to this type of area how much of advantage will, sh will she and the other swiss team members have i don't know how much of an advantage she has but i mean many of the bit older runners more experienced runners have been running here yeah two or three times before i mean there was the swiss so week 2011 going in this area um there have been other races it's a very special area so for sure there have been races before like many years ago uh, if you have done that of course then it's an advantage otherwise I mean it's not the biggest advantage for the Swiss if you would like to have the, the Swiss runners going with an advantage you should have put the championships in another place uh, so Anna Dukorn is here. She doesn't look like she's going to take the new leading time. She was ahead of Andrina Benjaminson, as you can see by the three seconds, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, that was at TV1. But she is uh, slightly behind her teammate now, although she's caught Jana Shikova, who you can see there uh, ahead, the Czech athlete. She's caught her by two minutes. So Drickhorn through here and it's going to be close towards the second place. She's just going to go into third, just ahead of, uh, San just after Sandra Grosberger, who's still in current uh, second place at the finish. So this is a replay for Natalia Kempele. Uh, heading, I think she was heading out the wrong re-entrant there, expecting the control to come uh, a bit more to the west. But I mean this, yeah, it's a mistake, but you could show GPS yeah. replays from these controls. I, I mean, Sarah Hockström um, and <laughs> many other runners actually. Yeah, I think when you when she headed up there, it's, it is very green, and you've got like a line of depressions, um, which you can quite easily mistake for a line uh, a reentrant in there, and then it gets a bit confusing. So here we have another runner Ooh. that went very well in the beginning. It's uh, the silver medalist from the European Championships, uh, Evely Kasiko. Yeah, it looks like she's having a great race so far, backing up that uh, medal, and and here she is. The thing is as well that uh, we know that Carter Davis just after this TV control made quite a mistake. 
So this is for sure good split time here for the Estonian runner. See the sun hats out. <laughs> Spectators, it's very warm, it's very really, sunny. It's really warm today. But let's have another look then yeah. at this replay of the fourth control. And we're adding in Hannah Lundberg now in yeah. the blue. I think quite a good route choice there to control four. Also like that she is heading down there. This re-entrant and gets this, just by the name of Kasiko, this rocky feature that leads you towards the control. So very soon, I think we'll have her in the picture. Yeah, here she is. This is most probably going to be a new best time. Yeah, I think so. She's had a great start. Not any huge mistakes from her. This is that Sarah Hockstrand yeah. actually. They are running more or less together. That's what I mentioned before. Sarah Hockstrand did a big mistake, so she was actually caught by four minutes. Four minutes, yes. And there's Hannah Lumberry here in behind, so the two Swedish runners together. Uh, so we can also say that Kasiku passed Sarah Hockström as well. So Lundberg not in the lead here, that's still held by Carter Davis, but I think Megan's made a bit of a mistake into control six. Yeah. But climbing up here. This is a kind of a rockier part of the course. You have some really big cliffs, and it's a good uh, if you take the entrance to the sixth control, you kind of go in this uh, gap between two crags. Um, but it's really hard to see as you climb up this. out of that. Now Let's we get it here. Yeah. Big, big problems at this first control. Uh, not the only one in her defense. She uh, must have been so close. Yeah, but that's kind of the problem. You have to get very close. We have seen how bushy it is, how, how uh, green it is, how low the visibility is. And you have to be so uh, aware of where you are and really doing all the meters towards the control in order to mm. see it. And uh, I mean, she was close not once, but twice yeah. and still not ha able to see it. And I think that, that really is the difference between the first three controls and the rest of the course, because later mm -hmm. on in the course she would have seen it when she's like 10 or 15 meters away from the control. Yeah, those first three controls I think might make a lot of the difference uh, on this course today. Andrina Benjamin is still the current leader. Her time is about 42 minutes, 42.01. So... Uh, I expect there to be others who can catch her, but, but really we're getting a lot of the top names through here now, and they're not doing as quickly as her, and really she had quite a good uh, end of the course, I think, And I mean, well. uh, Benjaminsen is one of the names here with a good uh, time, but it's a bigger surprise that Sandra Gosberga mm -hmm. did such a good race here, and I mean, she, uh, all the way to the finish, she's just one minute behind uh, Benjaminsen. Uh, let's chat about Venla Hayu then. She's the European bronze medalist. Um, those champs in Estonia. The Finnish team overall performed very, very well at those European championships. I think it was like very, very good terrain for them. They put in a lot of preparations for that. She was in the top 10 at the long distance as well, but obviously has all of those miles and uh, crucially all of that descent uh, and all of the climb, all of the contours in her legs. Um, but she's a very, very good uh, middle distance runner as well. And unlike her teammates, like, for example, Marika Taney, I think is, I would call her a middle distance specialist. Um, ben Hayu doing both of those races and looking pretty good here. She is staying quite high, though, through here. And I'm not, yeah, she must have spotted the control. I there think you is. can see it from the other side because there's kind of a little bay where you can run around. So fourth so far for Ben Lahayu and those top 
run is there. Mm -hmm. And you can see that Tove Alexanderson a bit behind here. She had uh, some small problems to the first control. But really turning up speed here towards the fourth control must be the fastest time between three and four. Here she is. Yeah, it kind of Together opens up a little bit. Together with Natalia Gempeler. Yeah. So she's caught Natalia Gempeler by two minutes, can and then the Swiss athlete is going to try and hang on her tail. Can I'm say sure. that uh, Gempeler did uh, had another route to control four. Lost quite a lot of time there. I can also say that Simona Abersold uh, didn't have a good start into the race. Sure, we'll see that later on. So Alexanderson through here, she's very close to the control, but it's not going to be the leading time. But I expect her to really turn on the burners when we get to the, the transportation legs I mean towards the, the end of the course. The really important information here is to see that she was quite far behind at control three. She mm -hmm. was quite far behind at control one already. And now she's very close again. So she definitely has a good speed going on right now. She has her she get, got through the most difficult controls uh, more or less without any bigger damage and now she can turn up the speed but look at this now look at Abrazol's direction mm. out from the start it's I don't know what you, she was doing what she was thinking look at Alexanderson missing the control bit so Abrazol actually was as fast as Alexanderson <laughs> even though she had really bad direction but Abrazol uh, had struggled again at control 3 Let's see it here, getting into this greener bit, just running a bit north of the control. Oh, and then it's so hard, hard, to, hard relocate. to relocate. Yeah. yeah. And you can see it was about a minute, a minute. mistake. But then uh, choosing differently here as well, going all the way around. I don't know, it's not necessary. I don't think she will lose a l very much time, but about 10, 15 seconds maybe. So not a good start for Abbasolt, for sure. No, no, not the dream start. Not the start that she'll have wanted. You've got to try and rebuild from there. Uh, here's Cecilia Freeberg Klusner, the Dane, with a great uh, qualifier for her. And she's could be, well, she's certainly in the top 10 here. Remember, we saw her maybe 30 seconds lost into control number four but I mean in the grand scheme of things not too bad and just coming through this point so that was fifth for the Dane Okay, let's have another look. This is Simona Abbasol then, so we'll see her shortly through controls four and five. We're live with her now, and you can see the gap back to the leaders is well over a minute now, it's I think. It's about one and a half minutes. So maybe a minute lost at three. There's a few, you know, 10, 15 Definitely seconds lost half a minute at the, at the first control. And, and then I think another half a minute lost on the route choice, I think, to yeah, control may, four. Yeah, maybe 20 seconds, something there. So, no, yeah many many time losses adding up and what does she how does she approach the rest of this course will she, will she say well i'm out this is it I'm, i've made too many mistakes now no, i mean no that I, I don't think that um for sure she will keep on going and try to get a good time it would be diff a difference if, if it would be a long distance because then yeah, you have to fight through like for 90 minutes or whatever and then of course n bigger mistakes would be needed to to call yourself out But here I think she will she will continue fighting. I mean She will be confident enough to say that w even with two or three minutes mistake I still can up end up in the top six um, If it will be like this in the end and that Well, we'll see but for herself. I think she's convinced she can do that yeah, you've got to keep pushing, you've got to keep fighting, even here when you have had uh, big, big time losses. She's got, to, she's got to trust herself and, you know, she's going to be running with loads of confidence. She's just taken her first uh, world title, so... And I mean, but now she's 149 behind. I think if you're 150 behind in the finish, mm, yeah. it might still be possible to be top three, top five. We'll see.
So I think we're going to see Megan Carter Davis next. And you can see she's pretty close with all of She's quite a way behind Benny Minton, but close with a few others after that. Mm, and she had a big, quite a big mistake at Control 6, about a minute or more. And you can see, compared to the current leader, so that's compared to Benny Minton at TV1, she was 30 seconds quicker. So she will have lost uh, all of that lead. But... For me, she's a really, I mean, she's such a strong uh, and physical runner. And for these transportation legs here, like I expect her to be, uh, to be very fast and strong at this, at the end of this race. So she stays quite high through here. And you've got to watch out where she comes compared to, there's quite a few runners close together, but she does go into fourth place there. And potential for you know, all of those, all of these athletes that you see here, maybe in this top five, with the mistakes we've seen from the runners behind, there's a potential for a, maybe a top ten finish for them, I think. But of course, we, had a, we have a few good runners coming without bigger problems. Mm. Uh, Evelie Kasiko, Hanna Lund, Barry, uh, and then, of course, Tove Alexanderson uh, as well. So, yeah, let's see, it's still, still very open. So those are the current standings at TV1. So everybody has been through this point uh, right now. Megan Carter-Davis, who you just saw in the picture there, she was leading at that point in the course. But yeah, you've just named them. Those, those from two to four there, uh, I think those are the really the names now we want to be looking out for. Um, you named them. It was Evely Karsaku, Hannah Lundberg, Tova Alexanderson. Those are the ones I think we're going to be looking out for. Definitely, and I mean, I wouldn't call out Megan Carter Davis for a good result. Still, it, the, the mistake is about a minute. You look at two West and almost a minute. Of course, she might be a bit quicker just in her base speed through the terrain, but still, uh, not many of the runners got through without any mistakes so far. Uh, but the next runners we expect to come to this second TV control, Evely Kasiku, and uh, very soon as well, Hanna Lundberg. But let's take uh, Anna Durkorn uh, in <laughs> comparison <laughs> together with Andrina Penya means that this will all be all about this uh, final climb to control 19. Yeah, they're so, so close here. They're taking maybe Anna Durkorn maybe a little bit too high in the in the terrain there it's hard it's to tell hard to though say with the GPS, the GPS accuracy on is. there is quite tough but she goes a little bit straighter up the hill compared to some of the others Yana Shikova is still there and this is like when you when you seeing a course and it's right at the end and you see this climb at the end of the course it's like the opposite of what you want to see um, and very very few people uh, will be able to run up this slope you've got to Try and keep enough in the tank, though, to to get up here efficiently and then to do the run-in very quickly as well. But Dricon breaking into a bit of a run here. It's going to be really close between these two Norwegians. Uh, Benny Minson with, with the kind of more top results generally. But Dricon has been now become a part, a very stable part of the Norwegian sprint relay team and is proving that with another good result here to, today. This is seriously going to be going to be very, very good. And so she's going to fight hard. The uh, spectators here will really be pushing her on. And now she's got to go up and around this path. And she's got 50 seconds to see if she's going to take a new fastest time. Mm, she was just two seconds behind at the oh. pre-warning. So it's going to be very, very tight here. This is really going to be probably the closest uh, times maybe that we'll see in uh, this whole race. And she's not quite as quick as Yanashikova. Going to have try and keep some control on this downhill, and then she's going to be pushing hard. Is this going to be the new leading time? I think it may well be for Dricorn. Oh, it's going to be really, really close. She's going to fight hard all of the way, all the way up to the line, and I think it's going to be good enough. It will be good enough to take the new leading time there. So Norway one and two with Anna Dricorn into the lead. And Anna Dricorn was in sixth position at the first TV control. And there she was actually behind uh, Sandra Grossberger. So it looks very good for her in order to maybe get a top six today. And very soon, I think we can expect uh, Evely Kasiko and Hannah Lundberg. Here we Here go. We Here's Hannah Lundberg. This is a replay, so so yeah, synchronized um, as if they all started at the same time. And this is a this is a clear lead here yeah, by they, a minute. They picked out uh, Evely Kasiko uh, from the GPS there. 
should have been. Was she was into that control? She's in sixth place. That control, Everly Karsaku. But Hannah Lundberry, look at that—a minute and 18 seconds, and that's really what we're talking about here. Mm, and There's I a mean, few other other runners, I think, coming through this point too. She's one of the runners. She's one of the runners who has not been running the long distance. Uh, maybe it gives her a bit of an advantage uh, physically, especially now when you head into this last section of the course. If we compare to the runners waiting behind. Uh, Megan Carter Davis, um, we have Tuve Alexanderson, we have Simona Abrisold, all of them have been running the long distance. But Alexanderson is on her way. We saw Hannah Lumbo just take a lead of a minute and 18 seconds, but this is going to be another minute or so quicker than that. Tova Alexanderson, despite some wobbles in the first part, none of the mistakes were huge, and she's going to be rewarded with a new leading time. This is looking fantastic for, for another world title, I think. Mm, and, I mean, she's not alone out there. There's Natalia Kempele running together with her. Yeah. Uh, another small advantage, especially when it sometimes can be hard to spot the control as she got to feel at the first at the first uh, control earlier in the race. For the two of them here, then Alexanderson and Gempler. So remember, Gempler's time will be two minutes slower than Alexanderson. So could both of these runners end up with medals? It is certainly a possibility. And they will fight really, really hard towards here. You can see the speed of Tova Alexanderson. She's actually just trying to, I think this is where she's really going to step on the gas and really going to try and, and break away from Gempeler. I think if she manages to get enough away on the on the tracks or on these, these kind of forest roads, she might be able to, to lose the, the Swiss runner. And I mean, for Gempeler, it's all about uh, staying there because uh, look at the splits, how they develop. Uh, two minutes might just be good enough uh, if she continues like this in order to to get a medal. Yeah, but Alexanderson, oh my goodness me, but she's so quick through it here. It will be so tough for Gempele to, to follow. I mean, this gap here, when it gets a bit greener again. So first and third then here, Alexanderson and Gempele. And we've got uh, the only person yet who we haven't seen this through by the lake is the world long distance champion, Simona Abersold. She is on her way. So without uh, Abersold in the mix, those are the standings so far. That big, big lead uh, ahead of Hannah Lumberry. Natalia Gempela quite close at that point, and then a bit of a bigger gap then to Andrina Benjaminson, who we know has been beaten now at the finish by Anna Ducorn. Mm, there's only one runner to come. Mm -hmm. uh, Simona Abersold, uh, she will be off uh, about two minutes, I think. Yeah, I think so. It'll be a couple of minutes before we see her. But Anna Ducorn is the current leader. Congratulated by her teammate. That's really, really nice to see. Even though Benjaminson won't um, be in the leader's chair anymore, those two runners will have seen a lot of each other. Yeah, and it's really yeah, cool. It really here. is. <laughs> this is Gempela here, I think. Mm -hmm. And of course, we and would we never recommend to just follow. Uh, but it, I'm sure that she has this idea that uh, if she can stay together with Uwe. Uh, it could be a medal, but it doesn't look like this. Look at it just has a, another speed. gear. Oh. That's really incredible, just how much distance she's been able to, so to here's take. Here's the fight, maybe for a bronze medal. Of course, we don't have... Gempela uh, in that picture. Yeah. We don't have a uh, Megan Carter Davis in this picture either. She's not so far off. If, th if there's something we learned from the long distance, then it's n never call yeah. anyone out. 
<laughs> no, when we when we had Oli and Ho. Well, no, we had mentioned him, <laughs> but it's a bit like he kind of came out of nowhere into taking yeah, that You have mentioned him. I, have I, mentioned I can't him. claim that for myself. Yeah, yeah, I will definitely claim <laughs> that. Uh, there's still, yeah, I think there's still a good, there's still a good, quite a few runners in the mix for the medals, to be honest. But you can see Simona Abbasol, she's taking a different route down out of that 11th control. So here she is, we can pick her up. You can see she's already slower than that time of Alexanderson. But, goodness, with the number of mistakes that she has made, I'm amazed that she's still in this position. Yeah, that yeah. just shows her skill and her speed and the way she's been able to, to fight back after those mistakes. I mean Th really that's what I said when, when we had this 149 at the first TV control. It's like if she can keep that sure that the race will develop. Usually you win. You, the medal is within like two minutes from the winner. So there's definitely a chance. Uh, I'm sure she lost a bit more here too. That's just a great speed. Um, but not... Yeah, don't ca call her out yet. I give her better chances. Uh, what I've seen now from Kempele compared to her that she will make it in a good time to the finish. think that Gampele will have a hard time. Uh, she will be pacing very hard now in order to keep like sight on uh, to Alexanderson and it's always a crucial moment uh, later on when you have to start to do the, all the orienteering on your own again. You have to switch again back to actively doing the navigation. So Ben Lahayu into the finish now and she is going to be racing for a top three spot here going all out and i think she does just about make it she absolutely does then lahayu into the third place if we look back she was behind um yanashikova at the first part so she's had it had a bit of a better uh, kind of end to the course but it won't be enough for a medal here for the defending well, for the current European bronze medalist in this distance, in the middle distance. Mm. So we have indeed now had everybody through at TV control number two. That's control number 13, if you're looking on the tracking as well. So the big gaps at the... the very start of the race but if you look back in for, think, for the medals i think it will be a fight between even for the silver between hannah lundberg simona abrisol and natalia gempele maybe i mean it depends we don't know how it develops uh, between to Alexanderson and Natalia Kempley, if Kempley can stay together with Alexanderson. I, I mean, think the it's gap an advantage. We saw by the lake, that was loads. And by the time yeah, that gets get into, into, the, the into the forest, again, well, they're going to slow down, they're going to get closer together. I mean, if she sees Alexanderson when they go into the forest again, then she has a very good chance to keep to, together with her until the finish. And then she has a very good uh, chance to get the silver medal. This is Ingrid Lundenez climbing out here, but she has been overtaken by Ben Lahayu, who was the last person we saw into the finish. Uh, so it's not, I think, going to be maybe even a top 10 position here for uh, Ingrid Lundenez. And uh, I mean, this is really cool, this climb up here. And you've got the, uh, the running camera there right behind you. Um, it's not a fun. You can hear, you can kind of see the banners there. You can hear the spectators as well. They can hear the fact that you're coming through the terrain. It's really tricky. So fighting hard, Ingrid Lundinez, she will be outside the top 10. And a third of the Norwegians in towards the finish here as this race really begins to hot up. And I'm hoping 
the, the Dracorn still in the leader's chair. I'm hoping we can have a look at the GPS very soon, though. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting now. We're getting closer to the finish and to the decision. Look at this. What you can't see is that there must have been a small mistake, I think, by Tuve Alexanderson at one point. There, she's <laughs> moving back again. This is really surprising because this control is like the most obvious control on the whole course. Like, it's in the open, it's a really massive knoll with a crag on it. Like, you can't, unless you read her control description wrong or just didn't read it. But still, I mean, it, it, it's not really decisive here at the moment if there's not another mistake coming uh, regarding the victory. But the interesting thing would be to see Natalia Gempel in this GPS tracking because she is really in the fight for the silver medal. So it, uh, as it seems by now, it's between Hanna Lundberg, uh, Simona Abersalt and Natalia Kempley. And actually it's put like a split time at control 14. And there we had the three of them within two seconds. Uh, mm. Of course, it's based on GPS timing, but still you can see that's very tight there. So really close here, Megan Carter-Davis and Anna Dracon, the current leader. So Megan Carter-Davis knows uh. she's going way too high in this slope and has had to drop down now. That's Oh, now oh, it's she, a mistake. Yeah. The thing is, you see this platform here and you think you're at the platform by the control. Uh, and that is a big mistake there from Megan Carter Davis because it looked like she could have come in, in in first or second place, I think. It's a pity. Otherwise, she could have uh, grabbed uh, top five, maybe. Top five, top six. But uh, maybe more interesting very soon. We will have uh, the first runners of this, the first medal candidates to the 18th control. We expect uh, Hanna Lundberg to get there as the first one. So this is the uh, 18th control and we're kind of waiting for yeah, Megan Carter-Davis to figure it out but I think I wonder if we'll even see uh, Lundberg there beforehand I think there's someone else picking her up on the way guiding her to the control later on and uh, Lundberg should be here very soon so I don't think we actually we are waiting for Megan Carter-Davis I think we're waiting for on the Lund Barry and the, uh, was there a runner coming? And this is the lead that Hannah Lundberry has yeah. over uh, Anna Dracorn. Again, for me, she's got way too high into this slope. I, th I think it's still okay in this where she is at the moment. She should. I mean, she's. You're not above the control over. yet. You can use this yellow bit. You don't know how accurate the GPS is, and then you can stay mm. on the height and, and get there. I think that's still okay to do like this. Well, it's certainly going to be enough to take the lead, um, but where will it leave her in the end? Because I think you saw in one of the previous synchronized maps that um, it looked like Tova Alex, no, it looked like Simon Abersold was catching up with Hannah Lundberry. So she's the one we're going to wait and see through here. I think we might just yeah, see Carter Davis through first. I think she already passed through, so, so we skipped Megan Carter Davis. Here is uh, Sarah Hockström and yeah. Hannah Lundberg together. We know that they haven't been together all the time, so I think that uh, maybe Lundberg lost a bit. Oh, were they together at TV1? Yeah, but they, uh, and then they the split up and yeah, then they came back together. Yeah, and then they split together. up and came up together. Oh, and you can see Lundberg just trying to get away from Hogstrom there, taking a little bit of running at that point. And I think she is really racing for a medal here. I think Hannah yeah. Lundberg is... But every second counts every because it can be silver really or it close. can be leather. Yeah. It can be. It could be silver, it could be fourth. I think it's yeah. really, really tight around here. And you can see there's just those dense trees around this point. And the fans are going to know that she's going to need all the cheering on. She's got a teammate beside her. They'll go up next to this wall and then they've got to run 
Here she goes, there she is, Hannah Lundberry. Megan Carter-Davis into the finish. She's gonna be just outside the top six. So much potential for Carter Davis today. Maybe again, another potential medal race, but too many mistakes in there. Remember, she was leading at TV1. Uh, pretty gutting for her, but we have got the two Swe Swedish athletes on their way down here. And it will be the lead then for Hannah Lundberg. Will it be a medal? Only time will tell. She's going to have a nervous wait because we know it is super, super close out here. But she's going to push all the way, all the way into the finish. She's managed to take a couple of seconds out of Zara Huckstrom on this race. She goes and crosses the line. 40 minutes exactly is her time. And, and it will, will be very, very interesting really now tight. to follow because very soon I think we can expect Natalia Gempel to the 18th control. As I look on the GPS, I think she did a small mistake there. And as we know, every second counts in this fight for the medals because we can't forget about Simona Abersolt. Even though, uh, well, if I, if I look at the GPS, I think actually we can forget about Simona oh, Abersolt. No. <laughs> so we uh, look uh, at the, we're watching some more runners come up this hill now as well. This is Tova Alexanderson, and it's going to be enough for her today. This is a huge lead here. We're looking for Gempeler. We're looking for Abbasol. Can I get in amongst the medals? But Tova Alexanderson, she's put away the demons from the long distance race. It was not the perfect race from her by any stretch of the imagination. But crucially, no big mistakes. She's made a few mistakes. But they're all very, very small, and it's going to be more than enough for her to take the win today. It's going to be clear. There is no doubt about it, unless there's a miss punch, but uh, it's a fantastic run. It is her comeback race after the disappointment of not taking that long distance world title. She will get a gold here. It will be gold for Sweden. And Tova Alexanderson is going to win this middle distance I race. I mean, it's a classic too. Where she had a bad race next, uh, yeah, mm. not the next day, but the, the, the day after the race, she comes back and she shows everyone who's the champion. But what medal will again for Lagares? She's going to fight here. It will be enough for the silver medal, I think. Natalia Gempler crosses the line. And in her defense, I mean, uh, we have be said before that she may be following uh, Alexanderson to the finish. Alexanderson did a mistake. Gempler didn't do it. So she was always on the map. She did her orienteering. She was there when she was needed for the navigation bit. And in that matter, I think she actually deserves this uh, most probably silver medal because, yeah. Definitely, we can call out Simona Abrisson. She won't be here for a while. No, she won't be here for a while. I don't even know what is going on um, with her at all, but she is completely in the wrong place. Um, we need to try and take a look at that. Uh, but, so with that, we can name the medalists, I think, then. Okay, I think we can. And, uh, I mean, the bronze medalist, uh, the one not running the long distance, had a great run throughout the course. Uh, not the most experienced runner of this, so it, this makes the this performance e worth even more, in my opinion. It's a very difficult middle distance. She managed to get through this first bit without any bigger problems, which is very crucial today. Hanna Lund, but it, deserving this bronze medal. Natalia Gempel has said it before. Uh, I would have had my, uh, yeah. I mean, everyone would have talked about the fact that she was caught by Tuve Alexanders and got this silver medal. Now, uh, in the situation we have now, I think it's fair to say that she did the navigation because she didn't do the mistake Alexanders yeah. did. So in that matter, I think it was deserved. And of course, Tuve Alexanders, yeah, doing what Tuve does when <laughs> she, after a disappointment, just coming back. And she had some problems in the beginning to the first <laughs> control, but then. Uh, but then, uh, well, she just kept on going and uh, there was no nothing that could stop her. Okay, Look at Abrisol. She was exiting 15 and then she suddenly turned up there back again. And I don't know why. I don't Does she think she's hit the track after 16? I have honestly... Because she hit the big track and I think she... She's After in the hollow 16, here, and, she, and that's the yeah. hollow where 16 is, and yeah, now maybe, she's realized. Yeah. Yeah. So she never crossed the uh, the kind of the path running like perpendicular Bet between, between the 15 two and controls. 16, yeah. Must yeah. be something like that. It's 
I mean, it's a lot of uphill. It's it's warm, but it shouldn't happen, of course. No, um, no, too many mistakes. She and she was right back in the medal position after those mistakes at the start. She was definitely. They were punishing 14 uh, regarding uh, according to GPS timing within two seconds. All three of them: uh, Gempele, Lumpari, and uh, Abersalt. So I think, she, so Tova saying she was so confused, she couldn't understand anything. It, I think it was Control 15 she's talking about. Well, those two women uh, know each other very well. They're discussing, uh, you know, I think that control when we saw Tova make the mistake. Uh, and Natalia again to say, oh, I was just easy around that <laughs> bit. But if you've got the right picture in your head about what it's going to look like, what is up and what is down, and, 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 and what, what, what you imagine it's going to be looking like before you, you head there, then, I mean, then it's quite, it's kind of clear, but... We are not needed here anymore. It's like she's explaining everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't, we you know we don't even need like a um, recap a, a re of the, recap. the story. Yeah. yeah. So here's the world champion again. Yeah, I think it for takes the it fifth to time uh, in the Middle East. I think it takes it to 18 in total, and I think it takes it to 30 walk medals. And I think Simona Nigli has got 31. I think so too. <laughs> so it could be uh, uh, after the the relay race tomorrow. It could be equaling. Uh, the legend that is Simone Nigli, and of course, who is the course setter, one of the course setters for the whole of this World Championships. Um, she she has to get record. a few more uh, gold medals, though. I think Simone has 23. Um, so a few. Well, well, Tova's well on the way. She's up to 18 she now. She is, definitely. So this is the recap, mm. and you can see that not the best start for Alexanderson, not the best start for Gamper either. Uh, having problems at the second control. And then this uh, long neck to control four. You can see that here, Alexanderson made a big difference uh, compared to many of the other runners, having a good route choice, being very fast on it as well. Until here, it was uh, very head to head between her and Hanna Lundberg. But then in this section here, you can just feel the physical skills of Tuve Alexanderson, how she could was able to open the gap. Just had the energy and the power to push away from the others, and uh, at this point, Gampele and Alexanderson were together. So you can kind of layer the two roots above each other. We will be seeing the mistake by Alexanderson very soon, I guess. Uh, control 14 was the control when where most of the metal candidates were kind of uh, punching together, and here you can see that she couldn't see this cliff at control 15 and that was the time where Gampele could pass her and uh, from then she was in front of Alexanderson until control 18 actually so there where she made the difference compared to Hannah Lundberg a small mistake at 18 so it was almost opening up again maybe there she got some help from Tuve Alexanderson punching the control but those the top three world champion Tuve Alexanderson, silver medal to Natalia Gempele and the bronze medal to Hanna Lundberg. And that GPS tracking replay there, um, I think really hides some some of the hidden battles that, you know, the, the hidden battles for the medals, the way people drop down out of those medal positions. Um, it was even more, even more exciting than that. And, and here's the standings at the finish then. Uh, great result uh, for the Anna Dritkorn there into fourth. Andrea Benjaminson, her time stacks up into fifth place overall. Sandra Grosberger uh, making it into the top ten. 
uh, the Latvian there. So that's very, very impressive too. And Everly Kartaku just making it into the top 10. So a good, good mixture of nations, I think, there is, is always really exciting to see that. Just the way some of the smaller nations are progressing, the amount of time they've been able to invest in this. And when it's such technical terrain, uh, you know, these orienteers are really, really tested to the max. And, um, you know, almost nobody has a home advantage on this kind of stuff because it's so, so tricky. It's uh, Natalia Gemple discussing with her husband about the course. But she'll have to stop her discussions very soon because we're on to the flower ceremony. Mm, very soon we also have Simona Abbas also to finish. Yeah. She's punched the really pre-morning in 13. But she, uh, yeah, you don't want to be running into the finish when the uh, the flower ceremony is still happening. That's really, really tough. But it's gonna, it's her first world medal. It's only her second ever world championship. She's still incredibly, incredibly young, but making so much success uh, at this level already. Hannah Lumbo into third. The silver medal, though, for Switzerland today. It is Natalia Gempler doing uh, the right, her right orienteering when it counted, when it mattered, and trying to deal best as she can with being caught up by Tove Alexanderson. But this was the revenge race, and she was able to take it despite some mistakes. It is the win for Tove Alexanderson, and her speed on those tracks when she passed the lake, she just took a huge chunk of time out of the others. In fact, she was very, very close to uh, Hannah Lundberg in, in the middle section of the race and managed to pick up so much time towards the end. Incredible, incredible running from Tove Alice Vanderson. Very familiar to see her on top of the podium. And of course, one more gold medal to add to her ever-growing collection. And it's the first medal for Natalia Gamble in the Swiss jersey. And here we have Simona Abersold to the finish, eight minutes behind uh, it won't be very hard to analyze this course for her. She knows where she did the mistakes. Uh, was in the beginning, was actually fighting her way back into this medal decision. And then, uh, yeah, a big mistake. We have seen it uh, towards the finish. Just that control 18 for lots or of 18, 19. Yeah, lots of love for Simone Abbasold, even though it wasn't her race today. Control 16, it just had an absolute mare, and she goes, hey, that's orienteering, it's what happens. She's going to be outside of the top 10 into 13th place. She was fighting her way back into the medal positions after mistakes at the beginning, but yeah. But of course, she's very disappointed. Yeah, of course. Uh, good for her that she has the medal from the long distance. It would be even tougher otherwise. Yeah, and now she just is going to sit and look at the map, and yeah. All eyes on her. You when I think she just wants to go and hide, probably. Um, really, really tough. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite glad nobody's gonna. Hopefully, no, no, none of the big cameras gonna stick a camera in her face. But uh, well, maybe not. Oh, and she hit right on this wall as well. <sighs> Wasn't her day. It really? really was not her day. Can see how steep it is here. Yeah. I think the camera always makes it seem like less steep than it is. I mean, there's hardly anybody who's been running up this uh, this part of the course. Super, super tricky. And outside the top ten, a little shrug for her there. But I know she's going to try and recover well now. And I'm sure she's going to be part of the relay team who are going to try well, they'll, they'll aim for a medal, they'll aim for the win. Surely it's going to be really tough against the Swedish team, I think, tomorrow. This is her dad. She's just... She, she tried to explain where she was, uh, but she couldn't say it. She said, uh, I was probably here. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Some analyze left. Maybe she can just postpone it till after the World Championships. Yeah, she's got to try and forget about the race now and, and move on and keep their memory of that long distance in there. You know, there's there's so many positives that she should be able to take away from that race, the way she was able to fight to be back in the 
in the chances of winning a medal after those mistakes at the start, but really and tough. You can see the spectators kind of getting away from the sun, trying to get some shadow in between the races, because this is uh, the recap from the women's race. Very soon we'll switch over to the men's race. Have already uh, one finisher there. So uh, the men's race already started, but here a few pictures from the medalists. Yeah, top speed from all of these runners. No huge mistakes, and the Gempel are getting it right. It was really, no we knew it was going to be quite close between those medals, and uh, she had the picture right at uh, control number 15. Um, and we, you Valley can see as well, is uh, no one was down on 35 minutes uh, to be Alexander's on the finish time yeah. 37, so a little bit slower than expected, but not so far off. Gold medal, congratulations. Tell us the experience of your race today. Yeah, thank you. It was a really tough race today. I, some races you have a really good feeling and the flowing or cheering. This race was, uh, yeah, just fighting with the thoughts and uh, I did a mistake in the beginning. I didn't understand it to the first control and after that I had really to fight to come back to the race again and I also felt uh, quite tired from the long distance, so it was a real fight there. <laughs> So uh, could we say the 18th medal then is the medal of the fight or how, what was the special one of this 18th? Oh no, I have had the worst <laughs> races with even more fighting, but every medal and every race is special. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and congratulations again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to feel good in this terrain, um, especially when you make some small misses, it's hard to imagine what what it's going to look like around the control and I think that's where maybe she struggled on number one um, and number 15 as well but ultimately uh, even though she didn't feel the best she was by far by far kind of in, in the most control and had the speed where it mattered as well and I mean uh, when we are now slowly getting towards the men's race it's very interesting what she said about the long distance and how tired she was because yeah, she is so strong physically, maybe it doesn't really matter in her case, but uh, if you look in the men's race and we have so many different uh, runners who can be on top, then it will definitely uh, be one of the factors that can make a difference and it's going to be interesting to see how how much it will affect the race and the favourites because there we have more of the top favourites favorites that kind of decided to not run the long distance then compared to the women's race. You can see here quite quite big gaps uh, between uh, within the top 40 here. Easy Abbasi, a runner who picked the medal uh, earlier at World Championships ending up on 40th position so it's, that says quite a lot about the difficulty of the course. Yeah, very, very uh, tricky. Uh, some big, big, big time losses. Um, and I think certainly from some of the, the first starters, we saw people kind of going a bit around in circles, but we, uh, we just about recover from the drama of one race and we move on to the middle distance for the men. As we say, so many names in contention for this one. I think always when, we, when we, we're talking about a men's middle distance race, we want to say that it's, it's super, super wide open. And with the mistakes that we've seen here, I think it just makes it even more um, of a level playing field as well. Well, they've been uh, waiting for quite a few hours here in quarantine. There have been so many preparations going into this race. This is the final, final stages of it. We see the long distance bronze medalist, Oli Oyanaho there. And they'll have been running. We had the test races in similar terrain. They've been able to train uh, for little parts on an area uh, crest of sea, which is very, very uh, kind of similar, this landslide um, terrain with all these knolls and depressions as well. So much climb. And they'll be trying to you know, just get mentally prepared for all of these races as well. Not expend too much energy. Uh, just try and and keep it chill uh, for for everybody here, really. And gradually throughout the morning, throughout the afternoon, people leave there. It gets quieter. 
and uh, people start warming up, doing their own routines to get there. Uh, of course, the men's uh, is a little bit further. We have the same expected winning time, 34 minutes, but they've got 5.9 kilometers, 22 controls, and a lot of climb there, 220 meters of climb. Very difficult to calculate the climb on this when it's so uh, up and down through the whole terrain as well. Remember, we've got those five meter contours. And uh, let's have a little look at the challenge that awaits these men. Yeah, and as we've seen in the long distances, again here, it's kind of the same idea behind the course as in the uh, women's course. Uh, longer first leg, it's quite a difficult one because you have to get to the map. It's the same here, the first loop, the first four control in this case, maybe the most difficult ones uh, of the course. We have seen control number four in the women's race already a few of the runners struggling there then we have the same route four five uh, it's exactly the same controls so they say the same idea uh, behind the route choice there as well control six tv control uh, the same again of course it's changing the terrain is changing it's more open i expect the uh, less problems less mistakes in this section here between control six and 14 a bit of a longer loop 7-8 is an area where we haven't been for the women's race. Then straight up this hill, having a small loop just on the top of there. Then slide, slowly heading down again to the Kauma Lake and the second TV control, control 14. A uh, bit different compared to the women's race. Uh, then 15-16. TV control, seen many pictures from there. And then again, this kind of transportation leg, 16, 17. We haven't seen any problems at control 17 in the women's race, but we have seen problems at control 18. So this one, uh, different control compared to the women's you go really down into this depression then have this big wall up to 19 uh, go around to 20 we have seen none of the women we followed uh, went over the hill as expected and from there the final climb to 21 and the last control into the arena yeah so it's a tough old challenge with a few different parts to it again we start off in that green part then we have the whiter section on the hill in the middle and then some of those transportation legs uh, towards the end which look a little bit easier on paper but you really can't relax at that point of course they'll already have you know 25 minutes of running in their legs at that point and especially with those who've done the long distance as well it's going to be very very uh, tricky and tough to 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 keep enough you know, oxygen going to the brain to be, make sure you can do those legs properly as well. Let's have another look then at uh, this control four to five, this long leg. It's mm -hmm. the same as the women's, but but maybe see a few more people going a bit straighter. Yeah, and, and yeah, maybe. But I think we have seen two Alexanderson having a very good route here on this one. She went quite straight, quite much on this red one. Not hundred percent sure if she went uh, on the red one or if she did kind of an option there in between. Uh, staying on the, I think it was the purple option. No, uh, some somewhere between the red and the purple one. But basically, it's it's the same route. It's the same thing. Uh, I think it's good to go either the the red one or the one between purple and red. Uh, definitely because it's tracking up. You can see those two small tracks. They're not connected there, but uh, I mean in. Practically, now I think they are. Yeah, and I don't think we'll see many people taking that blue route at all. Let's have a quick chat then to the bronze medalist, Hannah Lindberry. Uh Congratulations, your first um, World uh, World Orienteering Championships medal. You must be delighted right now. I'm so happy. It, 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 I can't it cannot even describe how happy I am. This is this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, we have seen many of the runners struggling in the beginning and you haven't been competing in the long distance. So it was kind of your first race. You have to be ready from the beginning because it's the, the most difficult part coming right 
the way. How do you, how do you experience that? Because you must have seen a few runners there already or noticing that it's difficult. Yeah, I saw Sara at uh, first control already and I felt so sorry for her. But uh, I just refocused on my own map and uh, my plan today was just taking one control uh, at a time and not not doing anything else. And uh, that, uh, that was a good uh, plan today. And when you saw Sara, how how did you you know make sure you were focusing on your own race and, and not on hers? Uh, I always, when I see someone in the forest, I want to take a look at my own map and uh, do a, do my own plan. And uh, this was uh, I this what uh, I did the same uh, now. And give us an idea of the preparations of the hours of work that have gone into just this race, all the preparations uh, you've done in, <laughs> in <the laughs> physical training and looking at the maps as well. Yeah, yeah, it's so so many hours. I I can't count them. I, I mean. Uh, when uh, I was injured uh, during the last uh, World Championships last year, and uh, then I, I changed background on my mobile phone to this map, and since that I have focused on uh, this race. So uh, I'm so so happy I made it. Well, congratulations! Uh, well done again for the medal, uh, and we're going to get back to the men's race now. Congrats, though, Hannah. So let's have a look then at uh, uh, Larry Sild here into the TV control number two, uh, Vestergaard from Canada is the current leader at this point and it looks like he's going to go just ahead then so Larry Sild taking the new leading time we do have uh, Daniel Pompora in the lead at the finish 53 minutes and 20 seconds so far uh, uh, we've just seen Larry Sild take over the new leading time there the new the leader at TV control number one is Germany's Bojan Blumenstein so Germans doing pretty well uh, around this course so far and uh, maybe Michael Lejnik, oh yeah, Michael Lejnik has already uh, been through that point. So we were just looking at Larry Sild's time uh, for that one. Uh, and as per the women's, we have the, the best qualifiers starting last. Uh, and maybe now's a good chance to have a look at some of the favorites then. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so, I mentioned it before, there's so many athletes who can perform well. I think it's different because we have this, I mean, the long course for the men was really tough and we have so many favorites for this race. So I would say it's definitely a, an advantage to not be, if you, if you haven't been running the long distance. So for me, the whole Swedish team uh, among the favorites, because no one of them has, yeah, Emil Svensk has been running, but not Gustav Bergman, not Anton Johansson and not Albin Riedefeld. And all three of them would have been among the favorites, even if they would have competed in the long distance. But beside that, of course, we have uh, Ruslan Glibov, Casper uh, Fosser, uh, Matthias Kiburts, and th there are so many. Luca Bassi can do very well. Joey Hadorn, if I think if he gets gets through the first four controls, he can be very dangerous as well. I mean, with Oli, Oli, I, Oya now, and I will now call him every time as one of the favorites. Not not miss <laughs> out on him. Uh, but there are many, many, and. Uh, runners who can perform well and as you mentioned before in a race where you can almost everyone will do small mistakes mm. uh, it's more likely that we can see a uh, few surprises as well yeah I, I think so we we could very well expect an outsider maybe maybe into the medals uh if not for for the win as well and so uh Bayern blumenstein is still the leader at the first tv control for over for the men that's control number six and it looks good for the german to take another uh, uh kind of leading spot here at tv control number two back to Hannah Müller, uh, Bayern Blumenstein again and having a good run. Seems like the Germans have prepared very well for this type of terrain. Or maybe they've got the, the kind of right approach of of speed versus accuracy and and just trying to take every control, like Hannah Lindberg said, taking every control at a time and trying to minimize your mistakes. It certainly paid off for Blumenstein. So Blumenstein was just one second quicker than Larry Sild at the first TV control, and he's managed to break away a little bit more. Goes to 31 seconds. 
And then from this point, the characteristics of the course change a little bit more. You have a bit more of that track running. You go back into an area that's a bit greener. There's been a bit of felling around there. But let's catch up then with uh, the next athlete to go mm -hmm. to control number six, Ralph Street. Mm -hmm. Had a good start here. You can see that all three of them uh, go in between there, uh, as mentioned before, between the red and the purple option. Good start for Ralph Street here. Yeah, he had a good direction, I think, into the control as well. And this looks like it's going to be a clear lead. In fact, um, I think he's already reached that control. Yes, uh, most importantly, he didn't miss out on the first four controls. It's a very good start here. Yeah, that's exactly uh, what you want to see, I think, when you've got the most, almost the most dangerous controls uh, done with, out, out and um, achieved there. That was him only a few seconds ago just checking the direction out of the control and because you can see the men are going a different way to their next one let's have a look now the next athlete to reach controls 15 and 16 looks like it will be Finland's Mika Kirmala mm -hmm. very quick here from control 13 down to control 15 so I guess you'll see him in the picture very soon Mika Kimmela, ninth place in the long distance. So again, one, maybe one of those who who had a worse than average qualification, maybe underperformed in the qualification. Because uh, he's certainly gone, just gone into the lead then. At CDV2. From one fin to another, here's Topi Sirilainen. Didn't run the long distance. just trying to stay relaxed and calm on the start line just looking ahead to follow the tapes out towards the start control you can see how the athletes get tracked into the terrain into the start point so they can't see the runners ahead of them they're not sure which way they're going to go and running out towards the start control here it is and then it is really quite a tricky control i think a tricky control for the men compared to the women their control number one just because it's it's that bit further you get thrown into the terrain there's not kind of very many of really an obvious attack point for me there's a bit of green before the control mm. i mean it's it's both you get more time in order to get to the map and i mean you get help just before the map by this path so you get a little bit of time to get used to the mapping and everything at the same time as you mentioned it's just before uh, control you have this kind of green wall and it's very difficult to navigate on the line there because you have you want to avoid, uh, avoid to go down into the holes into the depressions uh, so you have to be very careful and we have seen a few mistakes to this first control, but we have also seen mistakes to the third and to the fourth control. So it's it's really this first section that's that's difficult. Yeah, really, very demand demands a lot on the orienteering, and uh, this is just kind of gives you an idea of how uh, that that climb back up from the lake back up to the arena that you can just see coming into view and how we're kind of nestled between the, the big mountains here in the valley with all of these these small hills as well. Very, very forested around here. Lots of orienteering areas um, that many, uh, many of the Swiss athletes will have been on over the years as in trainings, as juniors. And I mean, not far from here, maybe the most legendary Middle Eastern in orienteering history, the one when Thierry Chorchou made his uh, breakthrough internationally. Just a few kilometers from here, the Middle Eastern final from 2003 in Trin. So Aldous Uptis here, he was 18th in the long distance. Uh, and the Latvian, maybe hoping to replicate uh, results of his teammate uh, Sandro Grosberger. Staying a little bit higher up here though. A little bit bushy, a little bit steep on that point, but really attacking through there. And now let's have a look at this. This is Eskil Shinneberry and the f mm -hmm. one of the first is seen going this route. Yeah, I mean, he had a 
quite a big lead at control four. Let's see if it's paying off. In my opinion, it's a bit much running in the terrain, but uh, he seems to have a good speed, but I think he lost a little bit of time. Yeah, not much though, I think, um, really. But but then does it, does it have a knock-on effect um, when you kind of get later on in the course? Maybe, but it's still a minute before he gets to the next control. So we will take the time at control number six. See him through here. Looks like he will set the new fastest time. But he did have quite a big lead at the control before the long leg as well. So attack this first part of the course really well. It was actually quite uh, similar to the other route. But of course, you have to, it's, it's more difficult to execute. And you get less time to prepare the coming controls. Yeah, but he's done it very, very well. Takes a 30-second lead ahead of street. Mm -hmm. And uh, back towards the start, here is the bronze medalist from the long distance, Oli Uyanaho. Again, you know, you'd expect him maybe to be among some of the last starters. So I think we could really, really, really need to look closely for him to see if he's going to take uh, a good leading time here. He has a fourth place from the European Champs middle distance back in Estonia. And he said a few times in the... Uh, in his interviews, you know, he'd had a couple of fourth places, so it was really a relief, really exciting, uh, and uh, to, uh, you know, upgrade that one spot and actually get that medal. So we look back over this lake. This is where we're going to see, we see a lot of the runners go on this track. You can just see the other side of the water there. Uh, it's a spectacular color and the organizers have, have pinched that color for all of the branding for this uh, world championships. Really is a very spectacular part of the world, part of the country. and not a bad place for a dip. But we can recap, this is the, the leader. Uh, leader. We got Jarvid Westergaard, uh, starting for Canada, originally from Norway. Yeah, fighting hard here, so you can see 46 minutes. That is his time. And yeah, stacked up really well so far. So here again, look at it. Uh, now we had them starting together at control four. It's the leg replay. So definitely a more running in the terrain just out from the control. But of course, he gets a very nice entrance from the street. Lost a few seconds, but it's it it is okay. I actually expected it to be worse. You have to execute mm -hmm. it very well, though. Out from control four to five, you really have to find the small tracks, uh, which isn't always easy. And of course, it's uh, it takes more energy to run there as well. Middle distance where you get a lot of time to kind of relax kind of uh, just focus on the running and uh, you would like to take every chance you get of course that would be one yeah his Poland's Michael Lejnik uh, in towards the finish but he's not going to be uh, faster than the Canadian it will be a second position you could just see everybody like looks up to the right they're looking at the big screen there to see uh, where they are coming in towards now and and I think the polls did pretty well in terms of the numbers qualifying for this final. Mm. Uh, they had everyone. No, they had one uh, runner missing out. So yeah, so five, five out runners. of six. Yeah, pretty good. Back towards the start. Uh, this is Florian Hovald, another of the Swiss runners, going to head out into the terrain. 
And of course, Will, you know, didn't run the long distance. You can maybe, maybe a bit of nerves uh, heading out there. You can just see a lot of the runners are holding their compass flat. And it, it could be a terrain that uh, suit, can suit him quite well. He's one of the runners who, who likes it when he can run smoothly and with a lot of map contact through the terrain. Uh, definitely one of these middle instances where it is possible to run like this. Uh, on the other hand, of course, uh, you still have to get through and it's very crucial to get a good uh, start, not only time-wise, of course, but also for your self-confidence. What we, one of the athletes after the long distance was giving a, an interview, or maybe it was after the middle distance qualification, which was, was something like slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yeah, it was uh, Anton Johansson, and I think that's a very good summary. Uh, as we see, Lauri Sealed here doing kind of the same thing as Megan Carter Davis in the women's race, just being a bit high up the slope. Yeah, but uh, of, of course, I mean, it's, of course, it, it's uh, kind of overdoing it when you say that you run slow, yeah. but you're running at like 90% maybe and, and always try to be a little bit of ahead because as, lo as long as you're ahead, uh, you can very actively do the navigation and you can see the different things. You're both, av both avoiding or, or like lowering the risk for parallel mistakes and you get kind of a good flow through the terrain, which is very important here. So Larry Field pushing up the hill after the see him make a mistake into that control. We just saw him punch there a little bit too high and then overshot it slightly, but not too huge. And uh, again, these athletes have this climb up towards the arena. But as you can see, managing to keep running keep going up there and then even more of a climb up and around this hill for a steep descent in towards this arena it's not the most enjoyable kind of running i think when you just want the course to be over after 46 minutes of running i'm not sure this is going to be the new leading time but it's going to be pretty close And actually, it's going to be quite close here for Larry Sills to be able to take the new lead. He's, Seems he's lost to be the very tired. Yeah. Not really believing in a it super is, good race. No, but it is equal time there. But of with course, resicles. I mean, he, he can feel that he's uh, yeah. 10 minutes off the predicted winning time, so maybe not having the best feeling about his race here. No really really giving it his all and he was a bit ahead of the canadian um at earlier stages in the race so losing some time towards the end i wonder if it's in the physicality something like that Another recap from this fourth to fifth one. It's a replay. We are live with Thomas Krifta, or we are focusing on Krifta. Having quite a good start here. Almost the same position as Shinneberry at control five. So very soon to the TV control. Here we have him. Yeah, it's got a few more meters to go before we get the punch. But yeah, a pretty good start. Another completely different route we've seen to control number five. And Krifta equal fourth. Definitely a lot of self-confidence for Krifta after the long distance. You see already a little track just leaving the control, but then it kind of gets back into being a bit greener again. With all tennis. tennis, yeah. Yep, another Latvian. Again, not running the long distance. But Mika Kimmela, it looks like he will be the new leader very, very shortly in towards the finish. Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Bloody. I think he's spotted the control yeah. now, but another mistake. 
It is a quite green and bushy just before that. It's only a little form line re-entrant. It's quite green and bushy. You, there's almost like a little bit of an open area before it that kind of puts you off slightly. Um, but he might, seems to have got that control now and is on his way up towards the finish. You can see the time ticking by. It's definitely going to be a new leading time. Just putting his hands on his knees, trying to work his legs to go and as quickly up this hill. You can see that uh, that's a technique uh, you need on the long distance as well. Mm. I, I heard from Sebastian Indus that he had some... That he, the only place where his muscles really were sore was in the back side of the arms because he was so pushing so hard on these legs in order to get up the hills. Wow. Very extreme there. But Kumala, it will be the new leading time for the Finn. down this steep steep part punching the last control and Vestergaard is gonna vacate the leader's chair as Mika Kumala said the new leading time 44.02 so inching closer to our expected winning time but still loads of much faster guys still to come Yes, you've seen different techniques here. I think Larry Sild was able to kind of keep the running motion going up there. It's not necessarily better or worse, I think, to do one or the other. And here's Ralph Street then. He is at TV control mm -hmm. number two. And we definitely saw a mistake from I Ralph, I hope didn't we will we? see a GPS yeah, recap because too. he was running from the nine, eight control directly to 13. So he was kind of overshooting this uh, loop in the middle in between. Yeah, it was a very bizarre mistake. Actually, uh, to explain, I think. He did, it could have been worse. He lost about one, one minute, one and a half. Um, but still, I mean, that's an unnecessary quit. Yeah, it's, it's one of the mistakes you really get angry about uh, in the finish. But street running alone there and into sixth place. And Ralph has only been running the, the middle distance, not uh, opted for the long, not selected for the long. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be part of the relay team as well, as generally the best British male in the forest. Gustav Bowman is the next to start the European bronze medalist, world champs, silver medalist, but no individual world or European champs gold is today the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, But for me, definitely one of the biggest favorites for today, maybe together with Albin Riedefeld, he's not running the long distance. He's a very, very strong, technically strong runner, uh, has been preparing so seriously for this middle distance here. Uh, I don't think anyone else has been out in this tr training maps just around as often as he has. Uh, so it will be extremely interesting to follow him. But we can follow Eskild Shinaberry next through towards the TV control number two and he has maintained his good start. This is looking very, very good for the Norwegian to go ahead of Kim here. You can see it on the tracking. And even losing time on that, small amount of time on that route choice, four to five, actually, it seems pretty good for him so far. No big mistakes there. I mean, and to be two minutes quicker at this point, that's pretty impressive. And I mean, the time loss on the on the long leg was about five or six seconds, yeah, so it's yeah. not really yeah, something. Exactly. It's more about it, but um, it'd be more... The bigger thing, in my opinion, is that he needed much more energy on this route mm. and maybe wasn't uh, able to kind of get this break for his head for a few uh, moments as the others get. But otherwise, I mean, time-wise, that wasn't a big problem. Back to TV1 and Oli Oyanaho. He is in with a good shout of being amongst the leaders at this point. Your long-distance bronze medalist. 
And yeah, he will be the new leader here. Making it look very easy, the transition through that control. No stop and go. Looking very good. But his teammate, Mika Kimmler, on the leader's chair right now. Back to the start. Mm, interesting name, Yanis Bonek for Austria. That's extremely strong at the test races here. Um, also know that he was preparing very seriously for these competitions. Didn't travel to Yukula, for example. Decided to stay here and uh, use the traveling days many of the others had for training. And uh, yeah, he had good races. He ended up, uh, I think, just outside the top 10 in the long distance. And the qualification was quite good as well. So it will be interesting to follow him. I don't think he will get the medal, but uh, definitely possible top 10 with a good race. Waiting for Anton Johansson. Yeah, he's just Start. at the pre-start, I think. A big breath there. Silver medalist at the European Championships in Middle Easterns last year. Could just see, looking ahead into the terrain, just checking the compass there as well. Making all the final preparations. He's managed to achieve it at this level before. And he's at European level with that silver medal. And such is the strength and depth in the, the Swedish team that there's across the men and the women, there's hardly anybody running uh, all disciplines. I think probably just Tova and Sara who are running all, all uh, the disciplines. Emil Svensk, I think, is running all yep, of the disciplines. But straight out into the terrain, get the first glimpse of the map, and you're really thrown into this first part. I don't know how if we've seen many mistakes compared to the women on the, on this first part. I mean, we, we have seen mistakes, but maybe not of the the very very big favorites so far. If you remember back uh, to the women's race, we had almost every one of the favorites doing mistake there. Of course, we haven't had all the favorites there yet, but of for sure, there are mistakes also in the first loop. Here we have the comparison. You can see that Hovald had a good start until control four, then going out on this four or five, and that's the problem. I mean, I, I, I mean, he doesn't lose a lot of time, but he loses a little bit compared to Shin Nabari, and it's such so much more difficult to execute this leg in a way without risking to lose about 15 or 20 seconds on the way. And we, we know that Chinneberg did it well. Uh, and you can see that he, yeah, Hoval lost about half a minute here. But coming very soon then to this TV split. Here he is in the picture, hesitating a bit. Has to get down to the control. Doesn't look uh, like he has full control over the situation. No, this is yeah, coming back going. here. It's always uh, not a very good sign if the camera person is just staying in position. <laughs> Here's the control. Well, I think you don't expect the camera to be that close to the control as well. You're just trying to, when, when, but when you're second guessing things, you know it's it, it's not going as well as it should, really. So <laughs> maybe 30 seconds okay, lost on the route choice. Another time loss here, and it's going to add up now for the Swiss runner. There's a descent down from that fifth control 
into the kind of the darker and I think uh, just looking at the GPS and the splits from the GPS I think he was in the lead at the fourth control so it was a lot of time here between four and six say about 40 seconds on the long route and another 40 seconds here at this control Yep, and it puts him outside the top six. Next one to come. Uh, and this is the replay. Yeah, this is the leg replay. Yep. So as if they all started at number four together. You can see here the difference between Hovald and Schinneberg both going out on this long route and just not executing it very well. Hovald losing uh, almost a minute. 50 seconds here at the beginning and then he does a mistake as well just before the control. I also think if, if you go around there you really have to use the straight a bit longer as Shinneberry try to spend a few more meters there and then in the curve head towards the control. But Krypto's route going a bit further round also seemed to pay off but we go back to the start for the equal fourth place position at the long distance Amosvensk. He has got three World Champs goals, but they are all in the relays. He desperately, desperately will want an individual one. His best middle result comes from Norway in 2019 in that middle distance. In Usfold, so he's going to be attacking this one. And it could go really, really well for yeah. Fence, but he does, he, he, it could kind of all fall apart. He could, he... I mean, it's it's what I, it's the same what I said about the long distance. It's both an exclamation, the question mark. is in such great shape. He has had such a good uh, spring season. But there's always a risk for him at championships or bigger races. He can miss here. He has to really do a good performance. But... I mean, if he gets through, he's definitely a candidate for for the World Championship title. Yeah, we'll be watching those first two controls very, very closely. This was uh, Timo Sild in two fifth place here, just behind his brother. Again, such an experienced pair. Uh, in the meanwhile, I can tell you as well that we have a new leader at the first TV control, uh, Søren Trane Ödum, one second faster than Oli Oyanao. Uh, just get, got there. Yeah. We've seen uh, Silt getting to the finish, and here at the starting line, the world champion, world long distance champion, Kasper Fosser. Yeah, he's going to really want to try and make it too. And he, he said his, he thought his better chance would come in the middle. But, I mean, you saw him around uh, around the kind of athlete's village yesterday. Uh, well, I, I heard the rumors that uh, he wasn't uh, walking too smoothly. Uh, definitely was affected by the long distance race. So know that he struggles uh, quite often with some smaller, smaller or bigger injuries. So he knows how to handle that situation, but uh, he was affected by the long distance, that's for sure. I know that also from other runners. Yeah, and he knows how to kind of push, like push really hard, even when he's not feeling the most physically strong. You can I think. see there that Krivta just by leaving control 14, going around the hill there, lost a few seconds. Yeah, so there's a bit of a group Kirmala. here. And Krivda, I, I think, think is here with, Yeah, and uh, Hubacek as well. So a group of three of them, but Krivda is the fastest here and might just slot into that second place. He is in really good shape for these championships after that fourth equal place in the long distance. Again, you know, we're going to keep asking questions throughout the, the rest of this race about the impact of having run that long distance a couple of days ago especially when we when we see are we going to compare Gustav Berman to Kasper Foster but Martin Hoopman in towards the finish he'll be outside the top six you can see that he must have done a small mistake uh, in the beginning one and a, half, and a half minutes after and quite a good middle section 
Yeah, and then another one and a half minute in, in the end. Time loss. Of course, it's hard to say what's uh, due to mistake. It was there maybe not a, just a good execution of a leg or was there a mistake? Back to the start and the Frenchman, Luca Bate. Another runner who can is very strong when it comes to this smooth middle distance, very technical kind of orienteering. Expect a lot from him today. Also one of the runners not starting in the long distance. You can, you can almost see it here on the first meters. Mm. Yeah, he's really attacked this Really start. quick. Yeah. It's spotting the lines, having no fear, being super smooth, and you want to try and stay as error-free as you possibly can. So here we have Søren Traneodum. You see that he was behind Sinderberg. But uh, we're looking at really for Gustav, Gustav Bergman Bergman here. Yeah. He is doing a lot of terrain running for me. He cut down from four, uh, uh, very close to the red line, and... Yeah, he's one of the runners who's very good in just finding those fast sections. You can see the speed here. Yeah, very strong. This does look like it will be the new leading time here. There you go. You can see he's spotted that control down and up and keeps it smooth there. Makes it look incredibly easy. Fighting his way through. And I think that's Marius trying to Erdem, who he's managed to catch up there, who's actually in his first World Championships. Back to the start, Gautasteva, the Norwegian. And maybe a bit of an outsider in these kind of final few starters. Just staying focused on these last few seconds before he gets underway. And behind Stava, we only have three more runners to get their races underway. Well, it's Joey Hadon, Alvin Riedefeld and Matthias Kiburz. And in all of those runners, there's medal potential. Yeah, course. definitely. I think in all of the runners we have seen <laughs> the last minutes almost. And uh, another one with medal potential already showed it at the long distance. Yeah, Oli Oyanaho dropping down here, going in towards the lake I think section. He will be late. Yeah, I think he will he has too. Has to go to the next control in order to get the split time. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be as fast as Shinaberry, who actually is coming to the finish really soon. Eskil Shinaberry looks like he'll take a new leading time. So Oyanaho will not be quicker than the Norwegian, than Shinaberry, who should very, very shortly be in the finish arena. But Oyanaho, we, we saw like, his strength in the last part of the course and where he had that physical difference compared to the others. He also was just very smart in taking the right route choices. So, you know, it could pay off for him. But he is actually already 27 seconds behind Shinaberry, who I think we should see very shortly into the finish. I think he has a few, mi few seconds to go until... He will get here, but very soon, yeah. Yeah, there he is. He's into the finish, and it was the new leading time oh. for Eskil, for the Norwegian. And two minutes and 13 seconds. I actually expected the spectators to cheer up more when yeah, he's coming. Yeah, me too. That's why I thought he wasn't in the arena yet. Yeah, you can see coming into the finish as the current leader just ahead of Ralph Street. Ralph is into ninth position. 
like <laughs> Yeah, I watched that quite the same mistake. Yeah, but it was quite tough. Yeah, you thought it? Yeah, quite bad. I think I was like more than three minutes behind you. So, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah I, I had a really bad start first and third control. So. Yeah, I missed the third one, but then I started. Yeah. Yeah. Neither of those men, I think, quite uh, completely happy with their races, saying they missed time here and there. But Joey Haddad, I think if he gets around these the first loop, uh, it could be good That's for him. interesting. Here, look at Yanis mm. Bonek. was very close to the lead and then did his mistake, a small mistake at control five. I think he was in contention together with uh, Anton Johansson and Gustav Eriman. Johansson also won, uh, I think, is one focusing on here. Uh, because he will be very soon at this first TV split. Uh, and as I said, Bonek was there, then did the mistake at Control 5. Jon's on a bit off direction, but I think he's coming here, yeah. not too far away anyway. Yeah, he's definitely off the direction into that control, I think. He could have come from a little bit further down. But into second place, though, currently, 20 seconds slower than his teammate Gustav Berman. Alden Riederfeldt then is the next start. And the European middle distance champion could well be one of the favorites again. He hasn't run the long distance, unlike the man who's to start after him, Matthias Kiberts. But really attacking start here. As we've seen for all of these top guys, they can just take this terrain with absolute ease. Let's have a look then, Emil Svensk, mm. oh! And it's the thing uh, I was talking about, it's often that he struggles with one control, and it's quite big problems in his case. Uh, about, say, two minutes almost, one and a half, two minutes. Yeah, again, like, seems was very, very close and then just missing it, I think. And here's the last starter. And you can see that silver. there's someone expecting it, uh, expecting it to be a bit bushy because he didn't wear the glasses in the long distance. Now he's having them on. Is that for eye protection? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. I don't know if he's I mean, wearing like lenses yeah, I was or... Yeah, say for lenses or just from scratches and stuff. But Matthias Kibbutz is someone who kind of likes to psych himself up on the start line. You can see he's just a little bit more restless than some of the others, and this is like how important it is to find your own routine um, in this pre-start to get yourself in the right position uh, to be able to attack this course. Some people like to be super calm, super chill, take some deep breaths. Matthias Kibos just likes to yeah, kind of I, be a bit um, I think it depends like as well on if you're nervous, you would like to do something that maybe take a deep breath to call yourself, calm yourself down a little bit. If you maybe feel that you have to get a bit more into the competition mode than you're jumping or just trying to move a little bit. I think it depends very much on what condition you're in and you feel that I have to get a bit more nervous or a bit more up in, in com into competition mode or I'm too nervous, I have to cal calm down. Well, that's a strange start. I think it's okay if you go out left and use this <laughs> small track. This is Topi Sirilainen, I think. Yeah, you don't have to go down there, no. but maybe he's, he was warm. Very strange. Yeah. Uh, Waiting like for Florian Hovald to come to this split time, the second TV control. You can see that he's quite off the pace of Shinnebari and Oyanao. Yeah, if you remember, there's 27 seconds between Shinnebari and Oyanao, and it'll be another minute back from there at least but Hovald does go into third with quite a few runners still to come of course I think he's caught up with Mathieu Perrin there the French athlete actually they have been together for quite a while every every now and then splitting up a little bit so I think it's wrong to say that they have been together but they have been around each other yeah. for quite a bit 
I think all of the the athletes before the championships had this this email say reminding them of their fair play and the big part of that was don't follow each other I mean it's so hard uh, when does following begin is it still following if you're actively reading the map behind I mean you have to run somewhere yeah. you can't just and actually artificially you, you go should, somewhere else. Yeah, just you should go the way that that is that you want to go. That's what I mentioned when uh, Natalia Kempele didn't do the mistake. For me, that's proof that she's not just following; she's actively navigating. Of course, you get help from another runner, but I mean, what should you do in in some in the middle distance? I mean, in the long distance, you get the chance to go another route choice and so and so on. But in the middle distance, when it's mostly about executing, it's you can't just. They get yourself into air and be nowhere. Back to the picture now, because this is the wrong Urgent brother who's here, who we've got the time for. This is actually yeah. Surin, as you can see now, who is not quite uh, as quick as Shinobari and Oyanaho, but looks like he will go into third. Mm, had a good start, as we remember. Control six. Just uh, 22 seconds behind at the first TV control compared to Gustav Berriman. You can see uh, compared to Shinne Berry who was five seconds ahead. Now he dropped behind 137. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Soon we should see a few of the favorites. For example, Kasper Fosse, but he actually did the same thing as I did when I was pre-running, getting a bit far to the south and then ended up in this depression to the south. It's very difficult to navigate through the green there. Then he was too low to control three as well. Dropping quite far behind here in the beginning. Going, going Ooh. out on this. I think if you're up there, then you shouldn't change the route can see here is about a minute behind yeah I think it's more than a minute it's going to be more yeah. well more than a minute here and every <sighs> now and then with a small mistake um, so not the best start for him you can also say that there is an angle uh, 248 behind uh, in the beginning did a mistake there on the first loop as well here's Casper Foster more than a minute on yeah. the clock compared to Berryman. Yeah, losing some small amounts of time and just adding up and adding up and maybe with so much taken out of him from that long distance, he's not got the, the speed to kind of and catch I mean it back up again. He's t he at, the mo at the moment he has 10 runners in between him and, and the coast of Berryman, so it's not that he's... It will be hard for him to win a medal. Of course, it's still possible because, as we said in the women's race, with 124 behind, you might win a medal still. Yeah. We don't yeah. know if uh, Gustav will get through without any mistakes either. So he's not in finish yet. And but there are there are five guys exactly that's Kasper the problem Foster, but after Casper Foster. So by the time, you know, all of those five have come through that point, he might be three minutes down. Yeah, maybe not three well, minutes. No, but okay. Yeah. Just, I think just the, I, actually, I think the time Gustav has at this <laughs> first TV control is pretty good. So now we're really looking at Krivda, the Czech athlete here. And if you look uh, compared to the current leaders, that's compared to Eskil Shinneberry. He's losing time then here. Lost time between TV controls number one and number two. Not quite sure exactly where that was all lost. But uh, now I think it's he's alongside Gerno Insane from Austria. Lots of support for these two runners. But I feel like for Krivda, if he's going to end up in the same position that he was in for the, the long distance, he needs to have a much, be much closer to Shinneberry, I think. Some mistakes in the middle. And he ends up into third place, 224, slower than the Norwegian. Well, we have some replay. We see that Gustav Berryman is soon coming to this uh, 
TV control. You also see again the mistake by Oya now at control 14. Here he is, yeah. still in the lead. It's looking and very good for Bergman. Before 27 seconds. That's 39. So you can also say that Shinneberry had quite a good speed, quite good navigation skills, or at least quite similar to the ones uh, Bergman had here. Yeah, so I guess that Berryman's still the leader at TV1. We've not had everybody through that point yet. Um, well, we're so waiting for example uh, Hadorn, Riedefeld, Kibbutz, Kote Staver. Yeah, still a few people to yeah, reach that point. Luca Bassi there, 42 seconds behind. Yeah, he's just punched that control. But it is the lead so far and so far, so good for Gustav Bergman. He's trying to take his first ever World Championships win individually, of course. Yeah, it decided many of the relays for the Swedish team. Yeah, indeed, both a sprint relay and forest relay, both See, of those levels. It's very warm. He's going to drink. Not uh, so many, and especially cooling himself down. Not so many of the middle distances where you see the athletes drinking at the refreshment points. I think some of the Swedish athletes have started in like a wet shirt. They would have poured some water on themselves to cool themselves down even before they started. Maybe you know part of the warm up as well because it's really getting warmer and warmer out here. And very soon, I think we will gonna have uh, Oli Oyanao to the finish. And. Uh, Maybe, maybe with a new best time. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that one. As Gustav Bowman heads in towards the forest, in towards the terrain. You can see the little funicular railway was surrounded by these fantastic mountains. And Oli Yanaho should be in the finish very soon. I can see him on the hill there. I know he's going to be here very soon. Waiting at the finish is Eskil Shinneberry, but his lead, I think, is going to end for now because the bronze medalist in the long distance, Oli Yanaho, is here at the finish. And again, he's done a fantastic end to this course because you see there he was behind Shinneberry by 27 seconds and now ahead by 47. But I think that we heard Shinneberry say before in the interview that he lost a little bit of time at the second last control, so I think it might have been this. 30, 35 seconds, and uh, uh, maybe cost him quite an important position. Not sure if it's going to be good enough for the top three, but definitely another good, very good race for Oli Oyanao, especially if you keep in mind that he was one of the runners running the lost long distance already. But now we are waiting for more runners to come to this first TV split. Uh, next should be Joey Hadorn. Let's see if he came through this first bit in a good way. I think this we're going to go to, Yeah, exactly. This is TV2. Good two. position still into third to replay. Yeah, and if you look, so if you compare to Gustav Bowman, he's only lost 10 seconds on that and, and you also keep in mind that 40 of those 52 seconds he lost at control 5. Mm. So good speed for him, definitely. Yeah, really, really strong. He's also a runner who was running the long distance. Yeah, very true. So okay. next one, Anton Anthony Johansson. Yeah. No threat for Gustav Bergman. Maybe for Schindler because Schindler did the mistake in the very end. I think he's within this 30, 35 seconds. Now we had Joey Hadorn at the first TV control, 48 seconds behind. Into ninth position. So Anton Johansson being cheered through here, but I think he's going to be slightly slower than Shinneberry.
time is dropping now, and he will be slower than Yanis Vonek, the Austrian who we've just seen through this point. And let's see here. Now we got Kibbutz, and this looks very good going on this quite fast middle route, and you can see the, how big of a difference he made here. But is he off doing a mistake there, or is it just GPS? I'm not sure. Well, we're right. I think he's coming here, so I think uh, it was yeah. just the GPS. So this is going to be a new best time Whoa, for sure. This is a big gap look here. At, look at the speed. It doesn't feel as if he was running the long distance two days ago. Oh, that's very good. Very, very good. Yeah, and if we remember, he was the last starter as well. So with a minute And there's lead, Alvin Riedefeld as well. Yeah, he's caught up Alvin Riedefeld. So Riedefeld uh, will be a minute behind. And with nearly a minute gap for Matthias Kibbert and at actually, this part of the course... They were quite similar at control four. So a very, very good co fifth control and a very good sixth control as well. Now in contention, running together with Riedefeld. That's going to be very interesting to follow. Yeah, the two of them will be very strong together. They're going to push each other on. And of course, to catch up two minutes on the European champion for Matthias Kibbert. Remember, he's a defending world champion as well. That's going to give him a lot of uh, confidence. Just going to confirm that, yeah, things are going well. So this is how it looks, uh, the standings after everybody. We've had all the men through control six right now. Matthias Kiewert, 57 second lead at this point. That's pretty impressive. Gustav Berman, Anton Johansson, who maybe has dropped down a little bit in the middle part. Uh, all in contention there to Alvin Riedefeld that we just saw there through. He is in 212. A good mix of nations at this point as well. Uh, so exciting to see. We're still at this sixth point. There's still a lot of uh, the really tricky controls in the white and still now to go. Look at the. I think it was uh, here. Shinabel said that he did, mis did a mistake. Yeah, you can see it went a bit far up there. But you know, was quite fast already before. So I don't think it's the time where he lost the position compared to you You know, you can see the Torvald a bit low. Should see the nose here. We're waiting for Hovald to get to this control. Here he is. Will be tough to beat. Um, will be tight between him and between him and Kirmula. Yeah. But totally possible. So he had a really good middle section of the race compared to Oyanaho. I think well, we saw Oyanaho's mistake at, at 14. control number 14. Yep. Seems to be his only mistake of the race, I think. I'm not sure if he if he was totally clean in the in the first bit. I think he had a few seconds time lost there as well. And they can see all, all the spectators kind of waiting by the track. They all know he's coming. Everyone can see him on the big screen. There he goes. It's just cheered on. And this is such a brutal part of this course as he now takes the climb. It's almost like a, people are lining this hill to try and cheer on their favorite athletes, cheer on the orienteers. They need all the help they can get on this slope. It's really tough after well over uh, 43 minutes of running and then to have that control on the downhill as well but it will be close between Hoald and Kimala to maintain in a medal position but the Swiss crowd are on their feet you can hear those cowbells he's working really hard I think he will just get in ahead of the fin so Florian Hoald into third place not bad so far. Mm, had a very strong start, but then missed out four, five, and uh, fifth control, as we have seen in the pictures. Lost about one and a half, a half minutes in this section. So Emil Spence for the next we will see through here. If we remember, he had some time losses around control number three. Big time it, loss yeah, there. And it's put him well out the top three. Did I mean 
from there, he's still going quite okay. That's what he said. It was about 140, 150. He mm. lost at control three. He has a good speed. That's that's what exactly what we were talking about uh, all the time already in long distance. He is definitely the speed uh, to be up there, even fight for the gold medal. This isn't the good route choice, though. We want to stick closer to the fence, but not going to be too much in it. And then he's really going to open up. Use that fast speed. Here's Casper Foster. And you can see he is already late compared to Gustav Berman. He made mistakes on number one, number three, and on that route choice to number five for me as well. You can see compared to Berman, he was 124 behind at control number six. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I feel like he might have caught up a little bit of that time. But I mean, as, as far as uh, Berman is not doing any mistake, he's I, I, I don't think he will kind of get up there again. The gap is just too big. So, so behind Bonek, behind Johansson, quite uh, many runners in between him and Gustav Bergman. And there are runners to come after him as well. Kibbutz and also Riedefeld. And to the finish, we have uh, Søren Tranjødum into fourth position right now. Two minutes and 40 behind. Yeah, really strong work from the Dane. And soon, quite soon. Here's the replay from Søren Tranjødum. Fighting all the way, yeah, absolutely. And it was that fourth place. Yeah. Quite soon uh, we can expect Gustav Berriman to the second last control. And then we will have a new leader. And then I think we are ready for the fight for the medals. Yeah, I think we're I think when he gets here that that's gonna be really our first kind of medal indicators. And you know there's still quite a few runners to come after him who could do, who could try and match his performance. It's actually, I think, going to be quite a nervous wait for him, to be honest. But Oli Yanaho is in the lead at the moment. This is Foster. Foster still running along that track. Uh, now we have to pounce from Gustav Berryman at the second last control, so I think we'll have him in the picture very soon. He's most probably going to be a new lead. So hear the replay. Uh, now waiting for Luca Basse. Mm. That's a great start from Basse. But I hope we're going to see from uh, Gustav Berryman very soon. Cannot see him yet in the arena. Oh, looks like Basse has gone for a swim, though, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Basse. would be a really fast swimmer if he's running in the lake. So there. he punched in second, 22 seconds behind Gustav Berman, who should be at this arena very soon. Here's Basse. Mm -hmm. We actually know he's already it's come through replay. this point. This is a replay. But the uh, more interesting, Where's actually... Gustav? Here he is, yeah, coming here he to is. the arena. You can't see him in the picture, but we can spot him. Yeah, he's fighting hard up this hill, and we really need to see this, because this could be a medal from Gustav Berman. Here he is, he's going to come around this corner. But he Ooh, lost time. He, he lost about lose 40 time. seconds. Ooh, it's going to be tight. It uh, will be tight. Is he just tired, or uh, did he do any mistakes? Uh, I'm not sure. He's fighting hard. He's only got 10 seconds. He's going to push absolutely everything on this line. I think he's still going to take the lead. But he did have a much bigger gap over Oli Oyanaho. Gustav Benjamin in the lead. 40 minutes and uh, 59 And Congratulations actually, by Ole Yanaho. If uh, Yanis Bonek has a very, very good finish to the 21st and 22nd second, uh, control, he can be a threat here for Gustav Berriman. 
Gustav Benjamin throwing himself down this hill. And yeah, Yanis Bonek will be the next one in. Knew there were seconds of time ticking down, but he did just take Ooh, the new position. It's going to be so, so tight between Bonek and Gustav Bergman. Actually, we have the punch from Bonek at the second last control. And this eight seconds ahead Ooh, of Gustav Bergman. Here, here he is. is. Here he is. Here's the Austrian Bonek. And this is definitely going to be enough. I think this will be enough. Can you believe it? An Austrian here, Janis Bonek. He's prepared so well for these world championships. And he's going to come into the lead. Could this be a medal for Austria? What a today? race. I mean, imagine if he would not have done that mistake at Control 5. I don't want to say that he would have won the medal then. Now it's going to be very tight, but still the possible for a medal for Janis Bonek. What a strong climb up this hill because he pulled near like 25 seconds ahead of Bergman on the last climb as well. That's very, very satisfied. Oh, I would just imagine if he would not have missed that fifth control. I'm quite happy about that, otherwise it would have been... Uh, I mean, I was building this one yeah. so much up. <laughs> no, but it's so good to see. You could really feel it from the results he had at the test races, from the results from the qualification. He had a good bit in the long distance as well. Not the whole course, but he had a good start. You could feel that there's something going on, and now he got it through this middle distance. And incredibly nice to see Austria up there. Yeah, amazing result there. Right, it's not over yet. We've still got a few runners still to make it through to the uh, to the lake and the controls there. One of those is Joey Haddon. Here he is. We've had Scout to Stava punch this control in 11th place with Joey Haddon. He was 48 seconds behind at the first TV control, if it's a bit more. But we also know that Gustav Berryman lost quite a lot of time from this uh, TV control to the finish. So actually we should compare him to Janis Bonek almost. Then he is only 20 seconds behind, 19 seconds behind. Lots of support for Joey Haddon through this point. There's still two more runners still to come. We know Matthias Kibbert had caught up Alvin Riedefeldt. Mm -hmm. the defending. And I think they're coming yeah, together. I Here we have Kibbutz and look at this. It's a Whoa. clear lead for Kibbutz. Not a great middle distance for him. This is a huge it's gap. A massive gap and he's <laughs> not alone as we said. It almost be good to have uh, Riedefeld in the picture uh, in the GPS as well because he I think he is almost in the fight for Maybe an extended fight for the medal. Mm, yeah, you never know. But let's have a look. So it was 57 seconds was Kibetz's lead. So here's uh, the, the first belt. one. And now it's going to be just under two minutes. <laughs> you can they see can, they can hear the cheers, the, right? the cheering. It's like an arena run through You can here, see there are right? some fans up there. Yeah. Ah, not getting out there. And the two of them, incredible, incredible work there. It's a massive lead, 142 ahead of Gustav Berryman. And then we also have to think about the fact that he lost quite a lot of time in the end. So Alpin Riedefeld actually uh, virtually on second position there. Luca Basse is in fourth position at that point. Yes, only one second behind yeah. uh, Riedefeld. So if we think, Look if we now can look at who's got the potential to take the medals as well as the people who are I in. Bonek is uh, 2.34 behind Riedefeld, 2.03, but he's together with Kibbutz. Um, Luca Basse, 2.04, so both of them ahead, or three runners ahead of Bonek, were not in the finish. So for me, between Riedefeld, Basse is in there, Bonek and Kibbutz, I think, mm -hmm. the main ones. Anthony Hansen, Anthony you Anson. never know. Oh, maybe Let's we will look. soon know. <laughs> I think this was a very clever route choice Ooh, here yeah. by Bonek, heading out all the way to the street and getting a very nice entrance. And of course, also it's quite up and down if you go where Anthony Hansen is. Yeah, gone exactly. To that and then 18. it's it's mm. it's very tough physically. 
So, rather strong finish, Peponek. But very soon, I guess, we will have Anton Jonas on to the finish. Here he is. Just on the top of the climb. Yeah, you can see he's already late. He's already late with losing some time at the end, as we've just seen. So, looking at TV2, he was a potential for a medal, but not going to be today. He will finish in the top six currently. Actually, we shouldn't, when we're talking about medals, we shouldn't call out uh, Joey Hadon yet. He's only 19 seconds behind uh, Bonek. And uh, looking at the finish with the uphill could suit him. But yeah. let's take Jonsson to the finish into fifth position. Had a good start. Was still uh, is still third at the first TV control at splits, but then lost time in between. But great to see Austria in the leader's chair. This, I think, is where we're going to see yeah. how Gustav Bergman lost the lead. Entering quite early there, but the, all of them, good route, in my opinion, by Bonnek. There you can see how close he gets, and then he has just, uh. I think it's physically that Bergman loses time. And also here, exiting from 20, he stays in the, like, mm. in the slope, and I think it's better to go up there. And then it just feels as if they as if he didn't really have the energy in the very end. Yeah, small moments. Well, we've just seen, um, Gustav, the, the last part of the race. It looked like a really, really great start for you. Um, what's your overall assessment now you're at the finish? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, really. I, I'm, I'm happy with my technical performance. I think I did, did well all the way, uh, but uh, I lack the physical physical speed today i i was tired already from after like four or five minutes and i coming down to 15 16 uh when you know the orienteering ended and the running started i was already finished you know i i wanted to, <laughs> to end the race there was it as expected for you i mean when you're talking about that it was physically tough was it was it tougher than you expected or was it as you yeah i, yeah. I think it was kind of what we expected uh i think uh it's like for me i was more tired than expected <laughs> uh, and the, it, it wasn't the course that was tough well it, of course it was tough but uh, not tougher than i thought but uh, yeah I'm, I'm disappointed with my physical performance today and i yeah i wanted more than this give us a sense of your preparations going into this race just how much time you spent looking at these kind of maps and being in this terrain mm, I, pr I probably did uh, less than most uh, at, at least uh, less than most of the swedish team uh, but I, of course, I've looked at it and, and trying to, like, get a grip of the big, big features and uh, the, well, where we have the loop, like, uh, down in the southeast. That's a really tricky area, and especially like it's not. It, it feels strange because the, you have the stream that goes like up in the slope and not uh, at the bottom, and it uh, takes some getting used to that map. But I, you know, when you're running and you just look w where you're going, I think it's pretty straightforward. Of course, technical demanding, but uh, nothing strange. Well, uh, congrats anyway, Gustav, um, especially with the first part of the race. We're going to get back to it now um, because there's lots more happening. Emil Svensk is here in the arena. Mm. And it's going to be outside of the medals for him. As we said, we, we saw that mistake at control three for Emil. Very early. I mean, it's kind of... I don't want... To, it's very typical if we look at his history and championships that it's... Uh, that he misses on one control and it's cost him again the medal i would say because he he lost about two minutes there it's almost the whole time he's behind at the moment uh, he has the pot potential he has had it for years but it's just that he never really manages to get the race ready when it counts um, but i mean sure if it's i mean the odds are kind of the same every time sooner or later he will manage to get it Mm, yeah, I think he's really just needs to all come together for him on the day. But it really is coming together for one person, Matthias Kibbets. You saw him on the GCBS tracking. Let's take Casper Foster, though, because maybe it was one race too many after all his, um, his amazing, amazing running to retain that long distance title. It will not be a medal here for Casper Foster today. Too many mistakes for me. Controls one and three and the route choice. 
He's been fighting back ever since, but it mm -hmm. won't be enough for him. But with Foster to the finish, let's see who's left for uh, as a threat for Bonek. We have still Riedefeld out there. We have still keyboards out there. Uh, and then I think, I mean, Bassey we have Joey well. Hadon and uh, Basse. Uh, those are the runners we are waiting for. But let's take Foster to the finish yeah, into fourth into position. Into fourth position. And I'm not sure it's even going to be a top six for Casper uh, Foster today. It looks really, really good for Matthias Kibbert, but we've got Albin Riedefeldt in there. We've got Joey Haddon in there. We've got Luca Basse. I think probably four of the last five starters have got potential to, to catch that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next one to the finish, the next one we expect to the finish, Luca Basse. And uh, it's, I think he will be late compared to Bonek, but let's see. Uh, yeah, we got the punch at the pre-warning now, but he is late. He's uh, more than a minute behind, so uh, basically it's now really, really serious for Bonek uh, for in the fight for the medals. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, well, let's see what Joey Haddon is doing first. And it's like he can't believe it, Bonek, just sitting there, cheering. <laughs> uh, you can see it here. Mm-hmm. Comparison that we know how strong Bonnick was uh, from 21 up to 22 and to the finish. Yeah, again, Basse sticking in this slope. I mean, you can do that. The problem is that no one else is doing it, so you don't have yeah. the tracks there. Otherwise, I mean, it's it's always better than going up and down and then climbing in the end. Here he is, though. Here's Basse climbing up here. He's really near the top of the slope now. But as you can see, it's already outside the medals. It was possible, I think, for him. Very, very possible, but not, not today. Not quite in this last stages where we've seen Bonek being really quick. Oh, Yanaho again. What a strong end to his race. Really, really strong. And Basse out of the medals, a medalist at the moment in medal positions. Yanis Bonek, Gustav Berryman, Oli Oyanaho. And fighting hard here. He will be slower than Foster. Probably slower than Shinneberry as well. And the Frenchman. Good at this very technical orienteering. Does go in sixth place currently. So Four men still out in the forest. I don't think Gautis Stever is going to be in contention, but Joey Haddon, Alvin Riedefeldt, mm -hmm. Matthias Kibbert all on their way towards the finish very and, soon. Uh, it seems as if uh, Joey Haddon and Gautis Stever more or less together. So the next one being a threat here for Yanis Bonek will be Joey Haddon. In about, let's say, one minute, he should be at the pre warning. Here is the replay then. So you see Haddon is see. really in amongst it, actually. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit behind. Good. We know that this was a good route choice here by Bonek. So let's see how it develops compared to Haddon. Uh, I can't really get the, the finish there. And here's the guy. Maybe the most nervous person in this arena. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If his parents aren't here, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The <laughs> Austrian team are there. They're going to have lots to celebrate, whatever happens with this. But nerves and Also, I mean, here. we're talking about the middle distance. It's the most technical distance in orienteering. And it's, I mean, it's a big thing to win a medal in middle distance. You have to be a very good, good orienteer. And he, he has proven it several times now. And today, it seems... Like it could get together, but let's take Hadon to the finish. He's climbing up towards um, the finish, and he's actually faster at the second last control, Whoa. so definitely a chance for Hadon. And he is a big, big climber. He is very, very quick, and there is a chance for Hadon for a medal here. He's got a, he's hit the tape. He's actually got to go a bit further up. I'm not sure he's taken the best route at all on this climb because he's gone too far to the left for me. Sending up at the Abersold route. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's going to be loads of cheers in this crowd. He's really strong. But he's so on. fast here. He is so fast on this climb. He absolutely powers up this hill. Ooh. We can see the side profile of him. He's going to it's throw gonna himself tight. down. And it is going to be really tough. I think this is the difference between a medal or not. For it's good Jeremy enough. Haddon. I think it's good enough. I think it could be. He's really got to work hard now around these last few meters and he's got 15 seconds to make it into the finish he's gonna depose back he is gonna be i think in with a chance of a medal today Whoa. and after the, the 
disappointment of the long distance. He was really, really disappointed because he thought that the long distance could be his race. Now he's coming back with a very strong race, especially in the second part here, and uh, most probably getting a medal, or most definitely getting a medal because there are only two There's runners only to come. There's only two guys left. There's only two guys left. It will be a medal for Hadon, but... It's two runners to come. It's Kibbutz and it is Riedefeld. Yes. And uh, if ah. they still are together, I think it's going to be a medal for Riedefeld. Yeah. It's, if not, oh. it's... Oh. We can, you can see yeah, it here. It's hard to say if they're together or not. Kibbutz. We're live with Kibbutz there. And I think... We don't know if they're together. But definitely we can say that uh, the world champion, if he doesn't mess up on the 20-second control, we will have him in the picture here. It's again uh, the defending champion, Matthias Kibbutz. I mean, this is textbook, absolutely textbook performance for Matthias Kibbutz today. We've been following his race and it doesn't look like he's made any mistakes at all. He caught up Albin Riederfeldt quite early on, stuck with him. And it's been mm -hmm. an absolute and I mean, dream performance. Everyone is rising here. Everyone should be standing because this is an enormous uh, performance by Matthias Kibbutz. No mistake at all. No feeling of tiredness after the long distance. Just an impressive performance and getting another middle distance gold medal here. What a performer. What an athlete on a home world championship. Grabbing a flag there. <laughs> he has more than enough time to grab the flag. The gap is going to be more than two minutes for Matthias Kibbert, who's had one of the performances of his life to win this world championship. Fantastic stuff, but all eyes should still be on this run-in because and we're looking for Albin Riederfeld because I'm not sure... I'm not sure Riederfeld is going to get the medal. I think the Austrian crowd are cheering because Riederfeld is going to be too he slow. He actually missed the 20. They were together at Control 20. He missed Control 21. And uh, under the time, we, meanwhile, we were focusing on Kibbutz. Uh, Riederfeld lost the bronze medal and it's going to Austria. The Austrian bronze medal. One of the stories from these world championships, surely and the Austrian crowd. Uh, the, the, the teammates are just on the corner, right by the finishing line. We could see them cheering so hard. But... Honestly, I don't know who is happier. <laughs> is it Janis Bonek or is it Matthias Kibbutz? Uh, of course, very, very tough for Riedefeld. I would still say... <laughs> how it this developed, it's very well deserved for Bonnick because he was all alone out there he was doing the race on his own and uh, yeah as you said it's maybe the history of the championship yeah I think it I think it's the story it's the one people are going to be telling but we shouldn't we shouldn't you know we did not we should not pass over this man here a near flawless performance here when there's so much pressure and expectation he's wanting to upgrade from the silver medal that he won in the long distance it's a home world championship he's such a middle distance strength and he just put together a complete performance today one that every orienteer should look for and should try and emulate because that was incredible yeah, I mean, it's, imagine the pressure. He's, everything is building up for the Home World Championships, of course. I mean, he has already a gold on home soil from uh, 2012. It was his first appearance in a World Championships, won the sprint there. But I think this is different. It's the middle distance. It's the most technical uh, discipline in orienteering. And to win it on the home soil with a gap of 2 minutes and 12 seconds, that's just enormous. And what a race. I honestly, I, it's not often that I have goosebumps when someone <laughs> enters, oh, crosses the finish line, but this was just very special. Yeah, an incredible performance. Um, I, th there are not enough words to be able to and kind of can, describe that. You can look out and you see Yanis Bonnick here, and you can mm. feel that he's, he doesn't know where to go with his emotions. <laughs> it's just. And we should also say uh, Switzerland 1 and 2. Yeah, a double, double for Switzerland.
Um, as I said, I mean, Joey Hadorn is really, is he getting through the first controls? He's such an unexpected runner. Sometimes you have the feeling that, no, he will never do it technically. But if you look at his history of mm. his World, World Cup history, it's only middle distances he was winning. He was winning a kind of one very technical Jaywalk as well. Um, very impressive. Look at the look at the times here at the margins between the second position and uh, the sixth position. Uh, it was very close behind Kibbutz. It was yeah, very yeah. very close. Yeah, between like fourth and sixth, uh, incredibly incredibly tight. Um, Casper Fossa outside of the top six. Luca Basse uh, into that top ten, but it was maybe on for a medal uh, earlier on. And we're going to have the flower ceremony very very soon. A lot of the uh, spectators going to make their way uh, towards this finishing line to uh, applaud uh, three fantastic performances. Uh, in really incredibly technical terrain. I mean, we were both out uh, pre-running this. Uh, we know kind of how tricky it is, and we're not yeah, even going, maybe we're half, not the scale the, we're not going to... half the speed of these guys. <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's the, technica the technicality of just get going around that course is very, very satisfying. And, it's such and a to have a good race there is so And it's so kind satisfying. of a typical, I mean, it's a... Uh, they try to make it hard, not only technically, but also physically. It's a very classic kind of uh, championship course. It's very demanding. Very, very demanding. And these three men have been the best on this demanding course. And what a result for Austria. Janis Bonak, who has dedicated so much of this season into preparing for this World Championship. It has paid off so, so well. And you can see how excited he is. Well, it is a Swiss one, two. Joey Haddon is such an unpredictable runner, but he has made it once again at this middle distance. He's kept the mistakes small. He managed to get through that really, really tough green bit in a great position. But with a margin of two minutes, two whole minutes on a middle distance, especially in the men's, men's field where it's so tight. Can you believe it? Matthias Kibbert, world champion once more, defending his title and another gold medal for Switzerland on their home soil. And actually something we were not mentioning before yet is that all three of the medalists were actually running the long distance. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is kind of, I think, quite unexpected for us. And but it, nobody, you still nobody get the nobody feeling that <laughs> Janis Bonnecki can't believe it still. I don't think any of these guys can really believe it. Like, there's no kind of someone who's a bit a bit uh, you know a bit unhappy with a bronze medal there let's chat through the, r the route I'm not though. sure if we're gonna get interrupted by the interview but let's look at this and for especially look at kibbutz there is no problems at all and bonek in this section very very strong as well uh getting through here towards control four but you can see that the speed of kibbutz very very good and this leg he performed very well and this Bonex maybe only mistake uh, maybe not perfect here out and here at control five just overshooting it a bit losing he was a bit hesitating before I think he lost about half a minute on this control and look at Hadon here turning up the speed in this middle section and, I mean kibbutz just going kibbutz just going like on rails here uh, but it wasn't the section yet where Bonnick decided, because here we could have Berryman in the picture. We could have Riedefeld there, Basse, Schinneberry, all in front of Bonnick and also Hadon, of course. Uh, I think we can uh, switch from keyboards to the fight behind, because very soon we get to the section. Both of these athletes were turning up the speed. Especially here, I, I think this is a very smart decision by Bonek. You get street, you get this path up there, the track to the control. We get the chance to kind of, yeah, it's not, I mean, relaxing is, is a bit the wrong word, but it's kind of to, to think, like, let your thinking go for just a few seconds, refocus on the last bit, and then here. Bonek, he was kind of up in, out in danger because many of the runners who stayed up on height up there, they overshoot like Riedefeld, they came too high in the slope, uh, but he didn't, and uh, very important for him there, he 
he got the medal. And Joey Hadon just in the very end able to overtake uh, Yanis Bonek, the bronze medalist. Matthias, was it some sort of a perfect race today? Oh, for sure it was a fantastic race. Uh, before the start, I say myself, I mean, today uh, I have to enjoy orienteering. It's in front of the home crowd. It's a technical course in a super nice terrain. Uh, so I was somehow really relaxed because I knew today will be a great race. But I was also really nervous because uh, somehow I knew it, uh, it's a big chance. Uh, but yeah, I. I managed to keep it together, even though I physically I was suffering uh, really hard. I thought that uh, the speed is maybe not good enough, uh, but yeah, obviously uh, I did a fantastic job. But then you came in this area. Tell us how it was at this moment. Oh, <laughs> it was so good. When I climbed up the last hill, I heard on top they were screaming, and once I heard a scream, uh, I'm going to win the gold medal. And yeah, when then I looked on the big screen, I saw the gap is big, so yeah, it was fantastic. Better than on uh, long distance when it was so tough. <laughs> Congratulations to this World Championship 2023. Und nun noch rasch eine Frage auf Deutsch. Wie ist das so ein Gefühl, wenn man da als Schweizer zu Hause als Weltmeister reinläuft und da so viele Schweizer Fahnen schwenken sieht? Ja, das ist unglaublich. Ja. Ich meine, wir wussten heute, wird sein Hexenkessel hier werden. Uh, last, uh, last start, they all were waiting on me. And yeah, I knew not exactly how I was in until the last post. And as I heard, I would win the gold medal. Yeah, those are the moments that will be long in the game. Very good. Herzliche Gratulation noch einmal, Matthias Gewurz. Well, it was mostly about the, the, like the experience of getting to the arena in the very end he was talking about, so I don't really need to translate it. <laughs> no, but we can chat to the bronze medalist. Uh, and Janis Bonek has turned from the most nervous man into the arena to one of the men with the biggest smile. Can you believe it right now? Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right now I'm just happy. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> You know, I'm quite happy as well, because I've been building up this for a while. I've mentioned you as one of my personal kind of black horses for the long distance. I got the feeling when you saw you at the test races, there's really something going on with you and there's like your, your level is just exploding. Do you have the same feeling before? Did you feel that this is going to be your chance at this World Championships? Yeah, well, I, um, like kind of in May, June, I started to feel really good, shape going upwards. Um, then I was on altitude in Livigno, there I got sick, was out for like 9-10 days. And then I really struggled, had like three difficult weeks into, into the World Champs. And yeah, it was really hard. Uh, long distance was really disappointing, I was struggling a lot physically. And yeah, I, 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 I didn't believe that I, I could run for a medal here at this middle distance. I, uh, I, I wasn't sure if I was technically good enough and yeah. When you got into the finish, did you think it was a good enough performance? Did you think it was a medal winning performance? Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was out in the forest, I, I made some small mistakes and I was feeling quite in a flow, but not, not like 100% like perfect or really straightforward to all the controls. So I, out in the forest, I had no idea. But when I, when I came to the finish and realized I was leading and I had beaten many, many strong guys, I, I had no idea, but I, of course, hoped it can be <laughs> as far as possible. And what does this mean for the Austrian team and for the Austrian orienteers? Because this is going to be one of the big stories of these world championships. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it really means, but uh, yeah, for sure, it's great. Um, we have been working hard as a team and getting stronger. Um, we are many young guys and uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's good to see we're working in the right direction and yeah.
Well, congratulations. All the hard work has paid off. Enjoy the celebrations now as well. And congrats again. Yeah, congrats. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Amazing work then from Yanis Bonek. And uh, we will finish up then for today's race. Those were the final results ultimately. Uh, a lot the top of ten. red and white on the top, but maybe not the expected one, at least on the third position. No, absolutely not. Well, that's it from two fantastic middle distance races. We crowned two defending world champions and we will move on tomorrow back in this arena again for what we hope will be a brilliant relay we're going to have some of those top nations many of the ones we've seen in the top 10 battling it out on some again very tricky terrain so we really really look forward to that one we'll surely see lots of drama and lots of great orienteering as well so we will be back with you tomorrow see you tomorrow This broadcast from IOF TV is brought to you by Tikator and Lumonite.